So I want to start off by saying welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome. If you're a fanatic of everything entertainment, then this is the channel for you, but in today's video, I'll be going through my entire 4K movie collection. So let's get into it. So before we get into it, this is a collab video with Kimberly Ashcraft, so once you get done watching my video, make sure to go to her channel and check out her video because she'll be going through her entire collection as well, so that'll be pretty rad. We are releasing them at the same time, so make sure to go check it out. And another thing, I'm not a big fan of collection videos where people point the camera towards the shelves and just read off the titles, maybe say a couple of words. The way this is going to work, I'm going to be saying at least a paragraph or two on each one because I love movies. I can't get enough of movies. I can't, you know, not talk about movies, you know. But one last thing, make sure to grab some snacks and drinks. And uh, yeah, because it's going to be a long one. I'm hoping this one's going to be over an hour. But anyways, one last thing. I forgot to show this off in my last collection video. This is Godzilla from Godzilla Minus One. I got this at FYE whenever I bought Event Horizon, Idle Hands, um, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and something else. But yeah, this was on the shelf behind the counter, and I'm like, I really need to get that. You know, this thing is like six inches tall. It's like 30 bucks. It's worth it because Godzilla Minus One is my favorite movie from last year, and I can't wait for an American release. But anyways, let's get into it. First up, we have Three from Hell, and cool thing about this, this is one of those $5 4K steelbooks from Walmart that I found, um, and I had to go, you know, looking around to plenty of different Walmarts, you know, I'm going to the one that's, you know, 20 minutes away from me, I had to go to one that's like 30 minutes and then 45 minutes. This one I found at a Walmart that was like 35 minutes away from me, and I couldn't believe that it was $5. I've never seen this uh, the only one I've seen in this trilogy is House of a Thousand Corpses, and even then I thought that movie was okay, so I'm not entirely sure that I'm excited to watch this one, but I had to get it because this steelbook is fucking beautiful. Like, look at this thing, man. I love skulls, so, I mean, of course, you see right here I got a medical one, um, but anyways... Yeah, this was like $5. I believe when this came out in Best Buy, it was like 25 So to get it for a fifth of the price, I'm down for that. 8 Mile. I haven't seen this movie in about 10 to 12 years. Um, I know this is a 2K upscale, but either way, I'm excited to watch it. Because like I said, it's been 10 to 12 years. And I remember sneaking this one whenever I would skip school. Um, because my mom would not let me watch this. So like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't remember it that much. Um, but I'm entirely you know invested in it because... I love Eminem. I went through a big Eminem phase. And then his new song, Houdini, like, I've been listening to that for, like, the last week. So, like, I'm really excited to get back into this because I haven't seen it in, like I said, 10 to 12 years. 300. I know a lot of people will say that Terminator 2 or Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl is the worst 4K that there is. I would make a pretty strong argument for 300. This, I hated this 4K so much that I didn't even finish it. Like, I, I used to love this movie when I was, like, 10 to 12 because I thought it was very badass. Um, but the last two times I tried to watch this, especially on this disc, I just found it weird that this movie was, like, very blue screen and green screen heavy. But then they tried to put this very heavy artificial grain over the picture, and I thought it just looked horrible. So I do not recommend 300 on 4K. I don't know if it looks any better on Blu-ray. But the Blu-ray is on here, but I don't know if it's the, you know, 4K transfer. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever give this another shot. Like I, I, like I said, I haven't seen this movie in its entirety in probably t you know ten to twelve years since I was ten to twelve years old because I'm 25 now and you know me trying to watch it these last few times I just couldn't. 1917. This is the first 4K steelbook that I got from Target, which their um, their physical media selection is horrible. I went there yesterday, the day before, and maybe there's like 30, 40 titles at most, and most of them don't even interest me. And most are DVDs and Blu-rays. I have nothing against Blu-rays and DVDs, but if I have the 4K option, I'm going to get the 4K option of certain films. But yeah, 1917, I, I remember being under the influence of alcohol when I watched this, and I enjoyed it. But I haven't seen it sober, so I can't really give, like, my full thoughts on this. A Christmas Story is the most overrated Christmas movie that there is. I heavily prefer the first two Home Alone films. Um, given, I don't know if I've seen this movie in its entirety, because, like, every Christmas, this movie's on somewhere at somebody's house whenever we go to Chris someone's house on Christmas. Like, why can't they just play Home Alone or something, you know? I don't know. I am willing to give this another chance because of the... 
uh, movie that came out recently. I forgot what it was called. It was a weird title, but the sequel to this, I was interested in seeing it, so that's why I bought this. And, you know, I wanted to buy some Christmas movies because I hardly have any in my 4K collection. A Clockwork Orange. I've only seen this once. It was probably like two years ago, and I found it really weird. Um, I have more respect for it than I do enjoyment. Like, this thing, this movie just wasn't my thing. Um, but I am willing to give it another chance because this is, like, some people say it's one of the best movies of all time. I'm not entirely on that wavelength, but I don't know. It, it, it looked decent on 4K, but it's not, you know, it's nowhere near one of the best 4Ks I've ever seen. Ad Astra was one of the very first 4Ks that I ever bought. I remember there was like a, a pile that I bought of like 7 to 10 4Ks once I got me a 4K TV. And then, you know, I bought my wife an Xbox One X and that was my first 4K player. So I bought like 7 to 10 4Ks at Walmart one day, you know, when I started collecting and got that 4K TV. So like, I watched this whenever my wife was at work and I remember enjoying it, but I thought it could have been a lot better. Um... I am willing to give it another chance, though. If you guys really like this movie, let me know. Alita Battle Angel. This is one of my most recent purchases and one of my last purchases from Best Buy. You know, now that they're out of the physical media game um, and all the Best Buys around me doesn't sell them anymore. But Alita Battle Angel. I've heard a lot of uh, great things about this movie. Still haven't seen it. Um, but people say it's a reference quality disc. And it comes with a 3D Blu-ray, so I thought that was pretty cool. I don't have a 3D TV or a 3D uh, Blu-ray player, but I'd like to get into more 3D movies and get me a 3D TV, um, even though that's pretty niche. But then again, so is 4K. Alligator. This movie, um, it, it's, it's, it's watchable. It's okay. It's like a 3 out of 5 or a 6 out of 10. But the transfer on this thing from Scream Factory... This thing looked fucking gorgeous, dude. Like, that was the main reason why I was watching this movie, because it just looked so good. Um, if you don't have this one, I highly recommend it for the picture quality alone. And because the cheesiness of this movie. I don't know. I remember <laughs> some of these scenes with the alligator were so goofy, but I had a fun time with it. American Psycho. This still book is awesome, and now they're selling it at Walmart. That's pretty cool, but I, I really love this still book. I, it looks better when I do it this way, right? Whichever way. Yeah, American Psycho, I remember watching this for the first time whenever this, you know, certain still book came out two or three years ago. And uh, I remember enjoying it, you know. It was one of those films growing up that my mom didn't let me watch, and I see why. Um, but I am willing to give it another chance because, like like I said, I had more respect for it than I did enjoyment. Or maybe I just didn't fully get it. Um, but I'm willing to give it another shot because I did enjoy myself. About three or four years ago, my wife bought me the DVD of this. And once I got this, I gave the DVD to my granny not realizing, I, you know, not watching this yet. So, like, very sorry for that. Because that's probably a really weird movie to give your granny. Um, Apollo 13, I remember buying this at a Best Buy that's, like, 45 minutes away from me. They were the first to not sell, you know, physical media anymore. But Apollo 13, um, this 4K isn't the best. And um, I remember seeing bits and pieces of this movie growing up as a kid. But, I don't know. With this one as well, I have more respect for it than I do enjoyment. Um, but it is a good film nonetheless. A Quiet Place. So I have seen this movie. I saw it in theaters and the sequel, which we'll get into that in a second. Um, but I haven't watched this 4K yet, so I don't know if I should put it in the watch pile or not. Um, but anyways, Quiet Place. Um, I am looking forward to the, the spinoff or the prequel or the day one film that's coming out this month or next month. So I'm going to have to do reviews on these two films because it's only two films. I'm pretty sure I can do two reviews within like the next month. Um, but anyways, I remember enjoying this one. Um, it's nowhere near as good as everyone says it is, but it is an enjoyable time nonetheless. But I do have a funny story. So spoilers, if you haven't seen this, I know some people make fun of the way I say spoilers. Um, <laughs> shout out to Brett over at Films Off The Cuff. Um, anyways, funny story about this one. We're going to go into spoilers real quick. Uh, whenever John Krasinski sacrifices himself towards the end when he screams out, I saw this with my aunt, my granny, and my papa, and my wife, and, uh, she started laughing. My aunt started laughing at that scene, and I'm like, are you serious? I give her shit for that, you know, to this day. Um, and then, Quiet Place Part 2. This was one of the first, I think it was the first movie I saw back in theaters when the pandemic happened. It was this and Conjuring 3. I don't know which one I saw first. I think it was A Quiet Place because it's PG-13 and I could have got my sister in there. 
Um, yeah, we got to see both because Conjuring 3 is rated R, but I think it was this one first, you know, just in case we weren't allowed to see uh, Conjuring 3 because she didn't have her ID. So we made a point to at least see one movie, and this was the first one we watched, and then we saw Conjuring 3. So I remember enjoying this one just as much as the first one, and I love that Killian Murphy's in here. One of my favorite actors growing up as a kid, and he's still one of my favorite actors. Still haven't seen Oppenheimer, which we'll get into that later, but yeah. Arizona, this was one of the first stillbooks that my wife bought me when Walmart started still, uh, selling 4K stillbooks. I remember seeing the trailer for this. Um, I think this is a RLJE title. It is. I was watching an RLJE um, title. I don't know if it was a Blu-ray or a 4K, but I remember seeing the trailers for this, and I was like, I need to watch this, and I still haven't. Army of Darkness is the first 4K steelbook that I bought whenever Walmart started selling 4K steelbooks. Um, and I, I just, I love the way this looks. I remember Best Buy had it, and they were, like, charging 33 for it. And I was like, yeah, I'm not paying that. I mean, as much as I love Army of Darkness and it's my favorite Evil Dead film, I'm like, I'm not paying that much right now, you know. But uh, I got this for 20 at Walmart, so I thought that was pretty rad. Avatar. I haven't seen this movie in 12 or 13 years, or at least like a year or two after this one came out. And I remember when this one came out, I was making a huge deal about it. I'm like, I have to get it because, you know, Avatar The Way of Water is being released alongside it. Or this one's being al um, or this one's being released alongside Avatar The Way of Water. And I was like, I'm going to watch this as soon as I get it. I didn't. Speaking of Avatar, Avatar The Way of Water. <laughs> uh... I like these movies, right? This was one of my most anticipated movies of all time. I've been waiting 13 years for it. I didn't get to get behind the hype train for the first film. And I was hoping to be behind the hype train with this one. And uh, I missed out on seeing this in IMAX. And I think they had it in IMAX 3D as well. And I was like, I'm going to go to that. I didn't go to it, but I did see it in theaters. <sighs> I did see it in 3D at my local Regal Theater. And... Uh, I'm never going to do 3D there again because their 3D is horrid. I say that, but then a month or two ago I saw Godzilla X Kong in 3D, but their 3D sucks at my Regal, and I think that was like one of the main things that I didn't like about this either because the screen was so dim. I'm like, I, can't, I can hardly see shit. So with Avatar 3, I'm going to make sure to go see that in IMAX and IMAX 3D if it comes to IMAX 3D. I'm going to go to that. Even though I said I was going to go to that with this film, but I didn't. Avengers Endgame. This is the Target exclusive. I got this at Half Price Books. And I remember when this came out, it was like 35 or 40 bucks, but I got this at Half Price Books for 20 And uh, as some of you know, worst movie theater experience for me of all time because there was a kid behind me that wouldn't shut the hell up throughout the entire three or three and a half runtime of this movie and he would repeat jokes that weren't even funny to begin with. He would repeat them two or three times and he wouldn't shut the hell up, but if you want to watch my video on that, that is from five years ago. It's a rant on why you shouldn't bring your kids to the movie theaters. But yeah, I'm willing to give this another shot. But I do need to get the other Avengers films on 4K. Actually, I need to get all the Marvel films on 4K because I don't have all of them on 4K. Next up, we have Baby Driver. And um, this was one that my aunt told me about. Uh, she hyped this one up and she hyped up Atomic Blonde and both of these just didn't pay off for me. I'm not a big fan of either of those films. Next, we have the Back to the Future 4K trilogy. Um, the video transfers on here look really good, but the movies, I really like the first one. Not a fan of the second, but I really like the third one as well. Um, sorry, Mike, over it. Did you see that? I know this is his favorite film trilogy of all time and his favorite film of all time, that being the first one. We did a collab series like two years ago, which is really fun to do, and like I had to get some use out of this, but the, the video transfers on here look really good. Um, I highly do recommend. Only thing I don't like, it has nothing to do with this box set, but this is the same box set as the Blu ray, except now we have, you know, 4K. But either recently or they're about to release individual slipcases for each film, which I'm like, you could have done that to begin with. Barbie has one of the best songs of all time in any movie soundtrack. I'm Just Kin by Ryan Gosling. <sighs> First time I saw this, it was really awkward because I was basically the only dude there that wasn't taking their kid to go see it. So it was really weird. It was a theater full of moms and dads bringing their daughters, and here I was a loner dude by himself watching Barbie. Now, I don't love this movie as much as some people do. You know, I have more positives than negatives with it. Um, but I don't think it's nowhere near as good as everyone says it is. But 
it is a fun time. You know, the second time I watched this and showed it to my wife, I did get more enjoyment out of it, but it's nothing great. Beetlejuice. Can't wait for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, the trailers really had me sold. Um, this is one that I always thought was overrated. I always enjoyed it as a kid, um, but I don't think it's nowhere near like Tim Burton's best, or at least it's not in my top three or five. Um, but last time I watched this, whenever I bought this like four years ago or almost four years ago when I started collecting um, 4K, this is one of the first ones I bought alongside Ad Astra and some of the John Wick films. But yeah, Beetlejuice, I had a lot more fun with it this time around, but I don't think it's, I still don't think it's um, Tim Burton's best. Speaking of Tim Burton, we have Big Fish. This is a movie that I used to always recommend over Beetlejuice. I love this one more than Beetlejuice, but upon rewatch, I think I prefer Beetlejuice. This one, I don't know. The transfer is not the best, but I don't know. The last time I watched it, I just wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I might have to give it another shot. I don't know why, because I loved this as a kid, but these last two times, I, I don't know. Something just didn't click. I guess this movie is about, you know, our main character and his relationship with his father. Um, I can't really relate. Like, I didn't have the best relationship with my dad. Still don't. And I guess, the, you know, the character's son does it in here either. Um, but, I don't know. Black Widow. I don't know why about this one i mean it's it's decent it's a fun time um but i do feel as if they released this like 10 years too late and the fact that they released this after black widow died in endgame come on guys you could have gave her her own film five years before endgame that would have been the perfect time which was 10 years ago it's a fun time i just i don't know why i bought this day one i guess i don't know why i still have a crush on scarlett johansson she was like one of the first female crushes for me blade runner the final cut i heard that this looks really great in 4k um and i remember watching this and buying the blu-ray five to seven years ago and i enjoyed it it didn't really stick out to me but i still had a fun time with it nonetheless speaking of blade runner we have blade runner 2049 which people say this one's either just as good as the original if not better um, but i haven't seen this since it came out on physical media and i bought a dvd of it it's probably a really bad mistake. I should have bought this on 4K, even if I didn't have 4K at the time, because I heard this is one of the best looking 4Ks that there is. I hope it doesn't let me down. Braveheart. I've only seen maybe 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour of this film. And what I remember seeing of it, I really enjoyed it. But I don't know. I bought this like a year or two ago because I'm like, I need to finally watch it. And I still haven't. This is one of the films that um, I was over at my dad's house and he was watching it and like I just sat and watched it with him. Somehow I really enjoyed myself with it, but I need to rewatch the whole thing. I need to watch the whole thing um, because I heard this is a great film and that the transfer looks pretty good, which films shot on film look great in 4K for the most part. Next up, we have Bullet Train. This is one that my wife bought for me last Christmas. Um, it's a fun time. I remember seeing commercials for this for like the longest time, like four or five months leading up to its release. And this came out around the time where I just wasn't going to the movies last year or either the year before. I don't remember if this is a 2023 film or 2022. Either way, um, this is one that I wanted to see for the longest time. I just didn't go to see it. But once I finally saw it, I had a fun time with it. You know, um, it's not the best thing ever, but it's still a fun time. Casablanca is a great reference quality disc when talking about black and white films on 4K. This is a film that I was never interested in until recently. I went, or I say recently, it's been over a year now, but recently, um, about a year ago, I went on a film noir kick, and even though this is not a film noir, it's still shot on film, and it's still from the 1940s and has Humphrey Bogart in it. You know, it was this, and I, I bought this, and a movie you'll see later, The Maltese Falcon on 4K, and I was like, I really need to watch these. And not knowing this was a love story or, or a romance film, sort of. Um, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I can't wait to rewatch it again. I thought it was really good. Most of the time when people say, oh, this is one of the best movies of all time, I'm usually like, yeah, I don't see it. I see it with this one, even though I don't think it's like a five out of five, I still think it's really good. Child's Play. If it wasn't for Child's Play, I would not have this channel. If it wasn't for Chucky here, I wouldn't have this channel because... Child's Play was my very first horror film. You guys may already know the story, but at two years old, I mistakenly watched this instead of Rugrats because I told my aunt I wanted to see Chucky. And her not knowing what Rugrats was at the time, which she should have because my other cousins watched it, but that's besides the point. She got a VHS at her son's house and we watched Chucky and I was scarred by this thing for years. But I always had this like overwhelming you know, feeling of intrigue and wanting to see it again, see if it really does scare me. But once I watched it again, I just had a fun time with it. And I was obsessed with Chucky for such a long time. 
Um, and I know I told you guys like two or three months ago that around this time I'd be doing a film series review, which I do plan on doing. I just don't know when. Um, but I remember the last time I watched this, I don't know. I don't know if this transfer wasn't the best. I preferred the Blu-ray over the 4K, which I'm really like scared for the other ones I'm going to show you in a minute. But I don't know. I always thought this film was like the best horror film of all time. Then I watched it again like two years ago when I bought this. And I was like, it's not. Which I hate to say that, but maybe next. I don't know if it was a bad mood I was in or what. But either way, if it wasn't for this movie, you guys wouldn't have this channel. Now on to my holy grail, my collection, which I did a video on this. Um, or at least introduce this at the end segment of my last entertainment haul, that being the Arrow Chucky collection, which has uh, Child's Play 1 through 3, Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, Cult of Chucky, and Living in Chucky. Living with Chucky. Uh, Child's Play 1 and Living with Chucky are only on Blu-ray, but the rest are 4K. These are the Scream Factory um, transfers. So, you know, that being said, I'm sort of scared because Scream Factory usually does great. I don't know what was up with child's play i thought that that you know the blu-ray looked better so i'm hoping these 4ks look great but i did demo uh cult of chucky really quickly on my ps5 to see if it would actually work because like i've never put an import in my ps5 or at least you know a 4k which most of them are region free anyway but still like you can never be uh too sure because this was like 130 bucks child's play 2019 i picked this up as soon as it came out because you know, like I said, I'm obsessed with Chucky. I love Chucky, but this is not the Chucky that we all know and love, but it's still a fun time. This is one that I saw in the theaters twice because once I paid for my friend to go see, so shout out Tyler. And the second time, I watched this just to show you guys how to sneak a whole pizza into a movie theater. So, like, I made a point to sneak a pizza just to watch Child's Play again. And I remember giving this film a Tommy Wiseau because it was so bad it was good, but... I enjoyed it. Um, I haven't watched this 4K yet, you know. And when it came to uh, when it came to physical media, I'm like, why is there no 4K? Even if I, even though I wasn't collecting 4Ks at the time, I'm like, that's weird that that movie only has a DVD and Blu-ray, but finally it has a 4K, and it was like 35 bucks. But I've got a poster with it, so I can't fully complain about it. But you know, but I am giving it to my sister. So, uh, Cool Hand Luke. I've never seen this. Um, I'm not really. Into prison films, I say that, but one of my favorite films of all time is The Shawshank Redemption. So I'm hoping this is really good, but there is a very quotable line in here. You know, what we have here is a failure to communicate or something like that. Like that, that came from this film. And I really need to see this because I love classic films on 4K. Creepshow is a reference quality disc, especially when it comes to 80s horror films. The neon colors used throughout in the comic book transitions, I think, are great. The video transfer... It's fantastic. Um, not too grainy. It's just right. I'm, I'm not a grain hater except when it comes to 300 because that just doesn't look right. Um, but yeah, I really, I really love this film and I love this transfer. Highly recommend it. Creature from the Black Lagoon. This still book from Walmart is magnificent. I love this thing and I love uh, this film even if it's not the greatest. I, I still have a really fun time with it. You know, and I can't wait to watch it on 4K because I've never seen it on 4K. I've only seen it on DVD. So, um, but also shout out to Jacob Martin because we did the whole series on here on his channel. Dark Man. This is one that I was excited for. I pre-ordered this, um, and I told my friend I was going to do a review on it, and I never did. And he was like, "Tell me how the transfer is, Andrew." I st I still don't know, but I need to watch it because I remember loving this movie when I saw it as a teenager because I bought like a a three pack with all three films on it. Which, speaking of which, I think it'd be really cool if they had the other ones on 4K. Days and Confused from Criterion. This is great. Uh, the packaging on here is fantastic. I don't love this movie as much as I used to, but I still have a really fun time with it. Like, it was one of those films, you know, when I was like 13 that my mom finally let me watch. Like, when I turned 13, there was like certain films she let me watch. It was this, the Texas Chainsaw uh, remake, and um, I don't remember what the other ones were, but I remember these two stuck out to me, but... I don't know. I don't love it as much as I used to. Um, I don't know if I, you know, recommend paying $35 for it even now, but great packaging. I just sort of mix on the film, even though I'm more positive than I am negative with it. Deadpool 1 and 2. I'm going to be doing reviews on these leading up to the Deadpool and Wolverine, which this is the worst packaging I've ever had. You guys can see that there. Like, I, I think I I mentioned this in a, in a video. I bought this on eBay from a Goodwill. Worst packaging so far. Not because of the artwork or anything, but like like I said, you guys seen it. Like it just looks horrendous. But you take bargains whenever you buy stuff online, especially when it's the cheapest option and coming from a goodwill. 
Uh, Dirty Dancing. I don't like this movie. Yes, I did watch it. The video transfer is really good, if not great. But I cannot watch this movie. It's the same reason why I can't watch this, Labyrinth, or um, Orphan. Like, there's just really weird subject material, especially when she's 17 and he's, like, in his 30s. I think he was in his 30s when they filmed this, or he was about to be, but he's playing a 20 or 30-something-year-old. Really weird. And I bought it for my wife. She did enjoy it more than I did, but I don't think she enjoyed it either. Um, Dragon Slayer. Never seen this. Um, this is one of my last purchases from Best Buy. Uh, because someone told me the transfer looked really good. And as a kid, I loved dragons. I loved Rain of Fire, uh, Dragonheart, and a couple other movies involving dragons. Never seen this one, but I do want to see it. Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which I believe was directed by Ron Howard. Yeah, it was. Starring Jim Carrey. This is a childhood classic for me. That's hard to believe this film is over 20 years old. Oh, it's 24 years old, a year after I was born. So I haven't seen it in at least five to seven years, maybe longer. Um, but I, it, I, I'm guessing, yeah, this was shot on film. That it, it probably looked really good. Jim Carrey would probably look really great as the Grinch in 4K, but I, I haven't seen it in such a long time, so I haven't watched this yet. Dune from 1984. I believe this is David Lynch. Yes, it is. I haven't seen this one yet. I've seen all the other films, you know, Dune Part 1 and Part 2. I haven't watched the miniseries or whatever that was or TV movie. I don't know. Um, I haven't watched this one yet, but I am, I am like, curious to watch it because, I, you know, I've now seen Dune Part 1 and 2. And I want to see how they differ from each other because I've heard some bad things about this. And I remember my wife bought this for me at Best Buy. This isn't, like, the big packaging or anything. It's just, you know, very standard um, Arrow release, but... I think this was like 35 or 40 so i'm hoping this movie pays off speaking of dune we got dune from 2021 or dune part one whatever you want to call it this movie blew me away it, it, it subverted my expectations and it you know it it crossed those expectations because when it comes to me in sci-fi sometimes i feel like some sci-fi films are like they seem over pretentious if that makes sense like it, it sometimes like me and sci-fi films are a bit complicated like it, it the movies themselves are complicated for me because sometimes they deep way too much into weird subject material that i just can't you know keep along to but this one you know i thoroughly enjoyed this one i think this is a great film one of the best sci-fi films within the last five years for sure now on to dune part two which i'll admit I was a little mixed on this one. I was way more positive than I was negative because I love seeing these characters again because, like, the day before I saw this in IMAX, I watched Dune, and I was really excited for this. I was like, I bought into the hype. Usually when you buy into a hype for a film, it doesn't pay off, but it did for the first film. It didn't fully for me with this one. But upon rewatch, I do enjoy it a bit more. There are some story elements that I am still mixed on, but I still believe this is, like, an 85 now. It was an 82. I bumped it up to an 85, so... Really good film. Not as great as everyone says it is. I believe the first one's better, but it's still a really good film. East of Eden is the first of the James Dean films that we're covering today. I have the rest of his films on 4K, or at least his starring ones. I don't know about the ones where he's a background actor. I don't believe I have any of those, but his main three films, I now own them on 4K because while I haven't watched any of his films yet, I know who James Dean is. Like I've always known. I've always seen him. Um, and I remember last month I was like on a on a binge like watching documentaries and movie reviews of his and I was like I really need to watch these so I need to watch this giant and rebel without cause which you'll see that later edge of tomorrow or aka live die repeat I don't know what else they called this I think there was like three or four different titles for this but I found this at CD warehouse the other day and I don't know I love this still but which is really weird because the day before I picked this up I was like I want to get Edge of Tomorrow on 4K. And like the next day, I saw this, which was really weird because I watched someone's review on it because I was like in an Edge of Tomorrow mood because I haven't seen this movie in a few years. Um, I remember being more positive with it than I was negative, but I don't know. Something told me the other day, I'm like, I really want to watch this. And the next day, found it. Still haven't watched it yet. See, there's a pattern there. Elvis was my favorite film from 2022. Um... At first, I was a little mixed on it because, like, the first 25 minutes were a bit, like, weird for me. They were a bit over the top. But then again, that's Boz Lerman for you. So, yeah, but Elvis, I don't know. Me and my Granny Vern bonded over El Elvis. Elvis was, like, one of her favorite persons of all time. And uh, I grew up on Elvis, like a lot of us people do. Um, but, yeah, 
Elvis means a lot to me, and so does this film. She passed two years before this came out. I think she would have enjoyed it, or at least the Austin Butler's performance. I don't know about the other stuff, you know, them using modern music, which I'm not a fan of that either. And then, like, the first 25 minutes being, like, a bit of a music video. That's what it felt like to me. Um, Enter the Dragon is a film that I bought, like, almost a year ago. Still haven't watched it yet, but... I am um, curious to watch a Bruce Lee film because I've never watched a Bruce Lee film. I've seen Brandon Lee's films, or at least one of his films, but I've never seen his dad's films. And this is one of the most famous ones that there is. And I heard this transfer is pretty good. I really like this banner. I like it. Some people don't. I do. Event Horizon. Still haven't watched this yet. Um, this is one that I've always been interested in seeing because it has Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne in it. And I love... I love the poster on here. The cover art is amazing. I really like that. And I remember when I saw this FYE, I'm like, I have to get it. Even though it was like $29. I remember Best Buy was selling it for about 30 so I got it for a dollar off. Woohoo! Um, but yeah, this is one that I, I still need to see it. And I really do want to see it. Fall. I've seen this in the theater, but this is the unrated cut. I don't know if it has the PG-13 version. It doesn't look like it, but has the unrated version which i am excited to check that out and i love this still book this still book i think is pretty awesome sorry about the glare but that is just beautiful um while the movie isn't the best like i was i was still concerned at the time when while they why they didn't um make a 4k of this and they finally did and the still book that came with it was awesome i really like this i do need to give it another chance because it is like a six or seven out of ten it's a fun time um but if you're scared of heights it's not a fun time I wish I saw this in IMAX. I don't know if it was released in IMAX, but if it was, I bet that would have been one hell of an experience. Fantastic Beast, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I don't know why I don't own the other ones, but this is the only Wizarding World film that I own. I don't know why it's this one. I don't hate this film. A lot of people do, but I don't mind this one. I think I prefer it over the first and the third one, but that's just me. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. This is a film that I always thought was overrated. You know, I enjoyed it as a kid, but... My mom's saying it's one of her favorites. I'm like, that's really one of your favorites? I mean, it's still a good film. And upon rewatch, like my most recent watch of this, I think I got it because now I enjoy it. Now I enjoy it a lot more than I did before. I give it like an 84%. I think it's a fun time. There are some questionable things in here, especially with, um, is his name Jeremy Jones? Or, or I don't, Jeffrey Jones? That dude's fucking weird. And then him like, whoo. But yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I finally get it, um, but it's still not like a 5 out of 5 for me. It's a 4 out of 5. Forrest Gump, another film that I grew up with, and I was like, I like it, I just don't love it. But from the last 5 to 7 years, I've grown to love it more and more, um, and I think this is Tom Hanks, one of his best for sure. There's a reason why people always talk about Forrest Gump and make impressions. Hi, my name's Forrest Gump. You know, always do impressions of it, but... Forrest Gump is a really good film. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. I do know some people that haven't seen this, but you need to see it if you haven't already. Some people say this is a really bad transfer. I don't see it. Then again, I didn't own the Blu-ray, so I, you know, it was a big uptick in quality for me. Free Guy, one of the best video game movies of all time, if not the best, because there are so many references in here. But yeah, this is just a really fun time. Ryan Reynolds is doing his thing and has a great cast in here. You got Ryan Reynolds, Jodie Comer, and Takai Waititi. Uh, alongside others, especially that guy from Stranger Things. I forgot what his name is. It's not... Yeah, I don't see it on here. I, I hate that I don't know, but this is the same guy that directed uh, the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine, which I'm really excited for that because this movie was really fun. That Captain America and, you know, Hulk references I thought were really fun. So can't wait to see what he does with that film. Fright Night. This is... I don't know if it's a Walmart exclusive still book because I believe I've seen it at Best Buy beforehand, but this is one of the ones that I wanted to get whenever Walmart started selling 4K still books. And I was like, I haven't seen this movie in about 10 to 12 years. And I remember mom said... And I remember my mom saying this is like one of the best vampire films of all time. I didn't fully get it, but I trust her, so I might enjoy it more now than I did before. But yeah, Fright Night. A lot of people love this movie. Fury is a film that I remember really liking when it came out, but upon rewatch, I just... I couldn't fully get into it. It's still a really good movie, but it's not entirely for me. Uh, but the cast is great. Giant was the most recent James Dean film that I picked up um, because I remember I bought Rebel Without a Cause and then East of Eden and then this. Um, still haven't fulfilled that James Dean kick, but I need to watch these, even though I think this is the one where he's in it the least amount of time. But either way, I'm excited for it because I love classic films on 4K. Godzilla from 1998. 
I'm going to resume the Godzilla series sometime soon. I don't know when. Um, but I can't wait to talk about this one because a lot of people shit on this one. But this is the first one I ever saw at my nanny's house. I saw it in the living room. Um, and I remember enjoying it. I didn't love it, but I thought it was a fun time. And, uh, yeah. Godzilla King of the Monsters from 2019. This is one that I can't wait to see because I'm enjoying the MonsterVerse so far. At least the ones that I have seen. I've only seen Godzilla 2014, Godzilla vs. Kong, and then Godzilla X-Kong. That's the only ones I've seen. Um, but I do need to get Godzilla 2014 on 4K and then... You know, I need to watch, give this one a watch as well. Speaking of Godzilla, we got Godzilla vs. Kong. This is a really fun time. It's definitely better than the one from 1962. I know. That's sort of sacrilege to say, especially to diehard Godzilla fans, but I, I feel this one's a fun time. It's not great, but you know what to expect when coming to a MonsterVerse film. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I think this concludes the trilogy really well. This one was a little bit hard for me to watch. I'm not like an animal lover, but damn, this movie got to me. Hacksaw Ridge. I remember putting this one off because I hated Andrew Garfield because he wasn't my Spider-Man for the longest time. And then I finally came around to his Spider-Man, and then I wanted to check out more of his movies. This is one of my favorite war films of all time. It's definitely in my top five. Um, and the still book, it's not the best, but I, I definitely like this underneath better than this, but I totally get why it's there. Um, but this is a really good film. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. And if you're not into war films, I still recommend this one because I'm not entirely a war film fan myself. Halloween Kills. I'm going to give a shout out to my best friend Sky. He loves Michael Myers. Uh, speaking of which, I got a Michael Myers shirt from Walmart on, but this is one of my least favorite Halloween films. I don't know why I chose to own this one first. This is the only Halloween film that I own, and it's one of my least favorites. Um, but I remember my friend was like blown away. He's like, you bought it before I did. That's a bit weird. I'm like, I know. And then like, I didn't like this one so much that I didn't watch Halloween Ends. I rewatched it. I liked it a little bit more, but it's still not good. Heat. This one is a little bit uh, controversial because this was like one of the last Fox titles to be released on 4K and, it, and they, people waited so long for it. And they're like, the picture's way too dark. I can't comment on that yet because I still haven't seen it, but it was only 14 or $15 at CD Warehouse. So like... I don't know. Uh, it's one that I'm interested in checking out. Home Alone. Two. This is one of two of my favorite Christmas films of all time. This one and the second one. Which, knowing that this is owned by Fox, or was, until Disney bought them out, we're probably never going to get Home Alone 2 on 4K. And if we do, it's probably going to be DNR'd up the ass. Howard the Duck. One of my favorite guilty pleasures of all time because this movie is so bad it's good. But if you haven't seen it, this is one hell of a movie. My wife still hasn't watched it yet, and I don't know if... I've showed, I've showed her a few scenes of this, and she's like, yeah, that's a bit weird. Especially with the relationship between Leah Thompson and Howard the Duck. Weird. I know what you did last summer. This is one of the, one of the films that my wife bought for me for last Christmas, and um, yeah, it's one that I haven't watched, or at least I haven't watched this movie in about 15 to 20 years. Um, so I don't remember much of it, but I know there's two more, I believe, and they're doing a reboot or a requel or whatever. Can't wait to watch this. Uh, whenever they announce the new one or whenever they have a release date and, you know, leading up to it, I'll do reviews on all three. So, But I heard that that transfer looks really good. Now we have the Indiana Jones 4 film collection on 4K. This is one. This was a, a collection that I was highly anticipating. This and Lord of the Rings was like the main reasons why I got into 4K, even though they didn't release this yet, you know, by the time I was collecting 4K, but I'm like, these movies are going to look great on 4K. And well, for the most part, they do. I don't know. These films just don't hold up for me for some reason. Like, I loved them as a teenager, and then when I watched all four of them in one sitting when I had COVID for the first or second time, this is like the only thing I watched for a day straight, and I don't know if it was because I had too much Indiana Jones for one day, um... I don't enjoy these as much as I used to, but I need to give them another shot because I don't know. I think I just overstimulated myself with Indiana Jones. Interstellar is one of the first films that I bought uh, when I started collecting 4K. This is, you know, part of that pack of seven, eight other films. Um, I still haven't watched this yet. I have seen part of this film. I saw the last 15 to 20 minutes because my sister, I went to go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2014 film, and she saw this. And I remember when I got done watching Ninja Turtles, I came and watched the last 15, 20 minutes. I found her, sat with her, and just watched the last 15, 20 minutes. So, like, I was confused, dude. It came from outer space. This is a really good film. I really do like this film. I, I hate that I haven't talked about it on the channel, but this is one that, if you haven't seen it yet, and you're into 50s, like, B-movies, this one's great. 
This is one of the best that I've seen so far, and the transfer looks amazing. Like I said before, you can never go wrong with black and white in 4K because it's something to behold, especially with like people that watch this on VHS and know how shitty the quality is and then bumped up the DVD, not much better, and the Blu-ray got a little bit better. This, amazing. Jaws. This is one that um, I used to love this movie as a kid. I don't as much as I... I don't love this movie as much as I used to. I wish I did, but now they're coming out with the sequels on 4K, which we've had Jaws 2 for like a year now, but like all four, I can't wait to own all three, or I can't wait to own all four and then the next three titles, because I do need to give them a rewatch, even though I own the sequels on Blu-ray, but either way, I need to give this another shot because I think I gave it like a 7 out of 10 last time I watched it, but it was always like a 9 or a 10 for me. John Wick 1. Um, I think I watched too much of the John Wick films within the three-day time period because, like, it was this, a couple of others that I bought, you know, when I first started collecting 4Ks. It was that, and then John Wick 2, and then John Wick 3. The last two didn't have slip covers, but John Wick 3 does for some reason. Um, speaking of John Wick, we got John Wick 4, which I didn't mind this one as much. I think this might be my favorite. Don't hold me to it, but I wasn't the biggest fan of the first three, so, like, I wasn't expecting much out of this one, but I had a fun time with it, even though it's damn near three hours long. Jojo Rabbit is a great film. Um, one of my favorites from Takai Waititi. This is a film that shouldn't work, but it does. Joker, this is one that I still think is a little bit overrated. Um, because I remember the first time I watched it, I was really disappointed in it. But upon rewatch, or at least upon multiple rewatches, I've grown to really like it. I don't think it's nowhere near as good as everyone says, but the 4K on here, really great. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, one of my favorite films of all time, even though it's really bad. It's so bad, it's good. And I'm glad that I finally own this because this is one film, if you haven't seen my latest video. This is one that lends itself really well to the format. This is one that I've been wanting to come to 4K, and now that it's finally here, it's a stunner. I got this Kingsman collection of the first two films. I still don't, I still don't have the third film yet, but I can't wait for Kingsman 3 because we have you know Kingsman 1 and 2 and then the Kingsman, and then I'm, I'm hoping next year or the year after we're going to get Kingsman 3 because I love the first film. It's like my favorite action film of all time. While the second film is nowhere near as good as the first, I still think it's a fun time, even though it's like one of my most uh, disappointing films I've ever watched. But upon rewatch, I had a fun time with that one as well. So, can't wait to rewatch these. Knock at the Cabin was actually my second favorite film of last year. Um, my first being Godzilla Minus One. This was my favorite for the longest time until that film came out. So, you know, if it wasn't for Godzilla Minus One, this would have been my number one because, I don't know, I, I don't really have that many negatives with it. I know this film is really mixed and a lot of people actually hate it, but I really like it. Labyrinth. This digipack, I believe, is selling for like 120 130 now, which I know you guys heard about my comment earlier, which I don't know if I can ever watch this film again because the sub the subject material upon rewatch is really weird. The fact that David Bowie is like 30 or 40-something going after a 16-year-old, to say that's problematic, that's like the least of its worries. I hate that I don't like it anymore because this was actually like one of my favorite films as a kid. It was actually my favorite film at one point, which is really weird. But I love the songs in here regardless of whatever I think of the film now. I love the songs in here. The practical effects uh, is amazing. The 4K doesn't look entirely the best, but it looks good. Last in Action Hero. This is one that um, I've never seen until I bought this release. Because I had FOMO. Like, I remember when this came out, I'm like, I have to get it because it's a new Arnie film. It sort of paid off for me. I had a fun time with it. Maybe I'll like it even more next time. I don't know. Next, we have Life Force. This this is a movie that I've been wanting to see for, like, the last four or five years for two main reasons. I'm guessing you guys know what that is. It has something to do with this lady right here. I think her name is Mathilda May. Yep. And that's the only reason to watch this. Because I can give you two reasons. I give this film a two out of five. For two reasons. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think you guys can guess what that is. This movie is not that good, but every scene revolving around Mathilda May got me in. Everything else, this just sucks. Medical effects are okay, you know, on some of them, but I'm not a big Toby Hooper fan. And that movie is one of the reasons why. Now on to the most disappointing thing I have in my collection, and that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy on 4K. This is like the box set that made me want to get into 4K, so I have a love-hate relationship with this, because if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have started collecting 4K, even though I didn't buy this until like a year into my 4K collecting journey. Um, these, 
or DNR'd up the ass. You know, everyone complains about Terminator 2. Watch these, okay? I don't know how this presentation is across the board because some people actually love this release. I don't. It sort of made me not love these films anymore. I never knew a video transfer can make you love a film even less, but I'll have to give it another shot. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I don't know. I watched all these within like a week because this is the extended versions, or it has the extended versions and theatrical, so... Nah. I'm, I hate that I don't love these anymore because this was like my teenage years, bro. Next, we have the Mad Max Anthology, which includes Mad Max, The Road Warrior, uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and then Fury Road. Um, I haven't watched any of these films since I was a teenager, but I remember really liking them, or at least I grew up with two and three as a kid, and I really liked three, but a lot of people shit on that one, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. But last one I watched was Fury Road when it came out like a on physical media all those years ago so yeah this is one that i can't wait to watch because i was gonna watch furiosa i still might i don't entirely know but yeah uh, i bought these because this was only 40 dollars. i think this is like a really bare bones release but i got all the mad max films on 4k now mayhem it's an okay film you know i have more positives with it than i do negatives it's not great but if you like office horror this might you know please your fancy but i don't know I'm, i wasn't the biggest fan of it I, like i said i enjoy it just not that much news of the world this is one that i think came out late 2020 so i'm guessing this might have been one of the first ones i bought within the first year of collecting 4ks and i was like a new tom hanks film on 4k hell yeah count me in and then i watched it while i do enjoy it i don't think it's like the best film that there is i mean it's nowhere near as good as any of his other films but it's a decent time um i don't remember much about it though which actually might be saying something i don't know not living dead the criterion release this thing is magnificent like i've stated before black and white films on 4k stand out and this is one of them like this this looks so good that like i felt like i was watching it in color it felt so lifelike even though it was in black and white but this film i used to always prefer the remake i actually prefer this one now and um yeah this is one that I don't know, this is this is a very inspiring film to young filmmakers, including myself. Because there is some technical difficulties in there, uh, just some technical specs that don't really hold up to today's standards, or just even back in 68, but I still had a really great time with it. I still give it like an 84%. It is that good, and it's very inspiring to young filmmakers, or just filmmakers across the board. Now on to the film that dropped the bomb. Literally. Oppenheimer. I still haven't watched this yet. I bought into the Barbenheimer uh hype because i went to go see barbie but then i never watched oppenheimer this is a film that i regret not seeing in theater regardless even if i haven't seen it yet this was presented in imax but where i live close to the mall of georgia in buford they actually had the 70 millimeter print which people said looked fucking amazing and i hate that i i hate that i didn't see it because i probably will never get the chance to see it that way again so oppenheimer i can't wait to watch it um i hate that i haven't watched it yet but Killian Murphy, I'm glad he finally got his recognition because he's been one of my favorite actors since I was a kid. Now we have the Predator 4 film collection, which includes Predator, Predator 2, Predators, and The Predator. Um, I watched the first film growing up as a kid. You know, it was on loop for like from ages 7 to 9, and then I watched the second one as well. And uh, I remember enjoying it, but nowhere near as much as the first one. Um, but I remember like that one scene where he imitates the the child's voice or whatever it was. I remember that always sticking to me. And then Gary Busey being in there is, and Donald Glover. Like I remember them and the Xenomorph thing. But that's basically it. I don't remember the second one that much. Um, other than them changing it from the jungle to the concrete jungle. But Predators, I've never seen Predators or The Predator. Haven't heard the best things about The Predator. But either way, I'm excited to watch these. Parasite, one of the most overrated films I've ever seen because... When this came out during, was it, the Academy Award seasons, no, everyone went and shut the hell up about this film, and I bought into the hype, and I thought this was going to be like, I thought this movie was going to knock my socks off. It didn't. This movie subverted my expectations because I thought it was going to be one thing, but it turned out to be another. The twist wasn't that great. There was only one scene in here that, that resembled what I thought this film was going to be, and that's the scene where we see this creepy creature thing come out of the fireplace or something 
That's what I thought this film was going to be. But it turned out to be something different. And I just wasn't a fan of it. I have nothing against foreign films. Like you guys know, my favorite film last year was Godzilla Minus One. So, like, nothing against foreign films. Like, you guys know me too. Like, I've reviewed a handful of Indian films as well. Like, it wasn't that. It was just the story was not what I was expecting. And it just didn't pay off for me. Still a good film, technically, but not one I'm going to go back to. I might have to give it another shot, though. Next up, we have the Planet of the Apes uh, 4K trilogy. We have Rise. We have Rise, Dawn, and War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, if I had to rank these really quickly, it'd be by release date. I love Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn, the, no, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is really good. War for the Planet of the Apes is good as well. Um, but Caesar, he's a great character. And if you haven't seen Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes or for the Planet of the Apes, I recommend seeing it. It's nowhere near as good as any of these, but still a fun time. Point Break. I remember obsessing over the fact that like this was coming to 4K because I've been wanting to see this film for the longest time, which I grew up with it, which I probably shouldn't have. Um, but I didn't entirely get it as a kid. Like it just didn't click with me. And then when I watched it as a teenager, it didn't fully click. Maybe now as a 25 year old man, it might actually click because I think I can handle the subject material now. But um, this is one that I think would probably look really great. I've heard great things about the transfer and. Like I've said multiple times before, films shot on film tend to look really great on 4K. Point Break is one that I can't wait to rewatch. Um, it's been such a long time since I've seen it. Probably 10 years. Um, it has Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, and then Gary Busey as well. Poltergeist. I remember starting a review series with this film, with this series, and then I didn't continue it. I just reviewed this one, and that was it. Um, also, I think this is really funny. It's telling you about, you know, people with epilepsy, that this has flashing lights and stuff. I've never seen that on a 4K disc. I've seen it on DVDs and some Blu-rays, but never a 4K until now. So I thought that was really cool. Um, but it's one that, like, I have a lot more respect than I do enjoyment, even though it still is really good. Psycho is one that I haven't seen probably seven to eight years. The first time I ever watched it was seven to eight years ago, and I was under the influence of... Uh, alcohol and I didn't completely get it I don't know if at the time I was full, finally coming around to black and white films but I don't know this one just didn't this one just didn't really click with me because I've heard that this was one of the best uh, horror films slasher films of all time the godfather of slasher films even though I think Peeping Tom came first but either way this is one that I can't wait to watch again because I do love the second one or at least last time I watched it it's been 10 years since I've seen any of the sequels as well. But I remember loving the second one, enjoying the third, and thinking the fourth one was just okay. I uh, can't wait to rewatch that. Um, I think I'll enjoy it more now than I did when I was 20. Pulp Fiction. Yet another film I loved as a teenager, and then, I don't know, just didn't fully work with me upon rewatch. I don't know. Um, I'm glad that I finally own it on 4K, but it's one that lends itself to the format really well. It's just one that I just can't fully get behind anymore. You know, it has nothing to do with the subject material, or at least, like, I have, you know, nothing personal against it. I just, it doesn't fully click with me anymore. Maybe I need to give it a rewatch. I don't know. Pumpkinhead is one of my favorite horror films of all time. This is one that I grew up with. I remember watching it a couple years ago on DVD. It still holds up for me. I haven't watched this 4K yet, but I think it's going to hold itself I think it's going to lend itself to the format really well because this is a creature feature from the 80s. I think it's going to look great. Rain Man. This is one that uh, one of my last purchases from Best Buy as well. This is one that I don't know if it's going to hold up upon rewatch because of uh, Dustin Hoffman's performance as an autistic man on the spectrum. It, it may still click, but I'm not entirely sure because it's called a spectrum for a reason, you know? It affects uh, people differently throughout the board. Um, so I don't know if this is going to hold up or not, but I remember watching this 15, 20 years ago. Uh, I liked it as a kid, but I didn't fully get it, you know, but I might, uh, I mean, I, I know what the subject material is now, um, but I don't, I don't know if I'll enjoy it more now than I did as a kid. I, I don't know. Ready Player One. This is one of my favorite Steven Spielberg films of all time. Some people might say Jaws or Jurassic Park. I, I, I enjoy these films. I enjoy this film more than those which is probably really sacrilegious to say, but I think this is more my style. Finally, we're on to Rebel Without a Cause. This is a film that I've been wanting to see for the longest time, and yet I still haven't watched it yet. Um, but this is one that has such iconic imagery of James Dean. And all the main stars in here had a very untimely death. I think everyone added up 
like James Dean, Natalie Wood, and um, what is his name, Sal Minio? Minio? I don't entirely know. Um, but they all, I think all of them combined only made it to 90? Nine or a hundred? That's crazy. And I can't wait to watch it because my expectations are probably way too high for a film like this. But I don't know. I'm really excited to check it out. Red Dawn. I remember my wife got this for me for Christmas. And yet, I still haven't watched it. I have seen this film. Just not this particular 4K. But I haven't watched it in 10 to 12 years. Because I remember this is like one of the first films that my mom let me watch when I turned 13. And because she finally bought it. She's like, I think that, I think you'll like this. I ended up enjoying it, but haven't watched it since then. Red Heat. This release means a lot to me. The movie itself, not so much. But this release, it really does. Uh, because I went down to Florida to visit a friend, and this was on vacation, and he took me to a place that sells physical media. I think it was like a, a sort of like a CD warehouse type thing where they sold like CDs, vinyl records, uh, you know, physical media for people that collect DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks. So he told me that this one was definitely worth checking out, and it was only $10, which I was broke at the time. I spent all my money on going on vacation than, like, spending actual time doing things on vacation. Um, but this one just means a lot to me because if you guys don't know Andrew Kavanaugh from Kavanaugh's Corner, highly recommend his channel. He's one of the main reasons why I got into 4K in the first place. Like, him and two or three other channels... Like, I, I'm glad I got to meet him in person. And we did a, a, a video, which probably in hindsight looked really weird because we were in a hotel and he brought lighting equipment to a hotel room. So people probably thought there was some weird shit going on, but we were just talking about what got us into physical media. So yeah, that was a fun time. Fun video as well, even though it was very weird being on camera with someone else. I, I'm used to being by myself. Even though I have done multiple videos with other people, but that's besides the point. Whenever you've watched someone on YouTube for like the last three or four years and then you meet him in person. It's, it's sort of odd, but it was, it was a fun time. Like he's a great dude. I still watch his content to this day and we still text each other. Like I was telling him about some of my most recent purchases. So like great dude, great channel, highly recommend. Um, and yet here's another film that I haven't watched yet. I've owned it on DVD and now I own it on 4k in this awesome slip cover still book I think is really cool. But this is one that, like, knowing the subject material, I'm not excited to watch it. Um, but I do need to watch it because, like, if I if I own a film, that means that, like, I have interest in seeing it. I need to see it. Requiem for a Dream is one of those films, but I don't know when I'm going to watch it, to be honest. Next up, we have the cheapest 4K that I ever bought until I went to Walmart and got those $5 4K steelbooks, and that is Robin Hood uh, from 2018, starring... Taron Edgerton and then Jamie Foxx and a couple of others. This is one that like I've heard very mixed things. Mostly negative, but it's one that when I saw the trailers I thought I was going to have a really fun time with it. And yet again, guess what? Still haven't watched it yet. So next time I do an update video, probably a year or two from now, I hope to say that I finally watched this. Roman Holiday. This is one that my wife bought for me like a month or two ago because I've been eyeing this release for a while now. Um, because like, like I've said, I've always seen like imagery of Audrey Hepburn but never watched any of her movies um, and I think that this one would probably lend itself very well uh, to being my first Audrey Hepburn film and I do know Gregory Peck from um, The Omen I do own To Kill a Mockingbird uh, but I haven't I haven't watched that yet either but we'll get to that later with the cover you would think this is a colored film but it's not it's black and white so I can't wait to watch it because I love black and white films on 4k even though I will say, like, the colored version of this and how vibrant this case is, I would love to see this in color on 4K, but it's probably not going to happen. Either way, I'm glad that I own it. Schindler's List. I haven't watched this since high school, and this is one that um, I think I played in either history class or, oddly enough, language arts. I don't really remember. One of those two classes, we watched Schindler's List, and this was a very hard watch for me. So most of the time that we were watching this film, I was on my phone because like, I just looked up and saw certain things, and I'm like, this is really fucked up. Which, I mean, the Holocaust was really messed up, and millions of people lost their lives. So I need to give this one a rewatch to pay my respects, because like I didn't fully give my respects watching it for the first time, because it was just way too much for me, a 10th grade student watching this. Um... But to be honest, I don't have interest in seeing it anytime soon because I just, 
I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm already a very depressed person. I don't want to watch something that's going to fuck me up even more, but I should probably get over it because people have been through a lot worse than me being depressed. Scream from 1996. This is a iconic film. I really love this cover art. This looks really good with uh, Drew Barrymore on there. Um, but while I don't have the same love for this franchise as everyone else, I do think Sidney Prescott is like top three final girls for me. I'll admit I have, like, the biggest crush on Neff Campbell. Even to this day, she looks really good. It's a bit odd, I know. Uh, then we have Scream from 2022. Yeah, 2022. This one, it's a decent requel. Um, it's one that, like, a lot of people were excited for this one. Myself included, not by much. Because, like I've said before, I'm not the biggest fan of this series. Um, but each film is pretty solid. Like, even the worst one's, like, a 3 out of 5, which is crazy even my favorite is like a 4.25 out of 5 and that's the first so like i'm not the biggest fan but it is a very consistent franchise this one um it's either the worst or second worst but even then it's not saying it's bad it's not it's like a 3.5 out of 5 now on to scream 6 which is one that like for like up until the final act this was my favorite scream film like i just couldn't believe it you know or at least i was enjoying it a lot more than the other ones Almost as much as the first, if not more than the first. And then the final act happened. The killer reveals atrocious. It killed whatever anticipation. It killed whatever flow that this film had for me. But I do want to get Scream 2 and 3 on 4K, but I'm waiting till Scream 4 comes out on 4K. That way I can get the rest of them on 4K because I do want to own this franchise on 4K. Like, if five out of six films are on 4K, like, of course, you know, I'm going to have to own it sometime soon. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for the fourth one to come out. That way I can watch all of them on 4K. Shazam is one of my favorite DC EU films or DCU, whatever you want to call it, which rest in peace, which there are some films in this, uh, universe that weren't the best. Um, looking at you, Suicide Squad, but Shazam is probably my favorite or second favorite of the DC EU or DCU. Absolutely love this film. This is a film that I had absolutely no interesting scene i am not familiar with the character or i wasn't familiar with the character and i had no interest in seeing it but my friend offered to take me and my wife to go see it because he was paying and i'm like i can't turn i can't turn down a free time at the movies and this ended up being my favorite or second favorite film of 2019 even more than Endgame. but then again i have my reasons for that because that was the worst movie theater experience for me for up to, of all time so yes i like this more than Endgame. Sue me. Great film if you haven't seen it. But yeah, Shazam is one of those first films that I saw uh, released to 4K. And I'm like, I need to see what 4K is all about. And finally got this like a year ago. And it's not a, it's not particularly like, it's, it's not going to blow your socks off with the video transfer. But I'm glad to own it. I think this is an upscale, if I'm not mistaken. Still looks good. But, you know, most modern day films are going to look clean regardless if it's on Blu-ray or 4K. But... Yeah, Shazam, highly recommend this movie. Speaking of Shazam, we have Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which a lot of people that like the first one don't entirely like this one, but I think this is one of the most underrated films of the DCEU or DCU. Once again, I don't know if I didn't have interest in seeing it. I was I was excited for it, and then I saw reviews, and people were like, this movie's not that good. Like, even people that I know enjoyed the first one, didn't enjoy this one. I'm like, oh my God. So I watched a spoiler video knowing what happens. And then once we get to the emotional scene, it didn't really hit for me, but this movie is very underrated. I think it's a fun time. It's like a four out of five for me. The first one's like a four and a half, if not a five out of five. This one's still really good. I recommend it. I hate that this movie didn't make that much money at the box office because this one definitely deserves respect. Silver Bullet is my absolute favorite werewolf film of all time. I watched this last month, and it still holds up for me for being the best werewolf film of all time. I love the story in here, and while the, the effects might not be entirely the best, the story is where it's at with this film. And I love the cast in here. You got Corey Haim and Gary Busey alongside others that I think do really great in here. My only like negatives with it now is the editing, and everything just feels way too fast-paced where like there's a scene and it's done within 30 to 45 seconds. It's just way too fast paced for me. Uh, you know, it doesn't really let things breathe, but that's basically it. Like, it's still like a 9 out of 10 for me. Sisu is a film that I haven't watched yet, 
But I heard that this film is really gory, and this is like my type of action film. I love when action films get really gory, and horror films, of course. That's my type of action. Like, even if it's very unnecessary, I love watching these type of films. Sleepy Hollow is actually one of Tim Burton's best films. It's like an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10 for me. And this 4K release looks really great. I love this orange at the top. This is very unique. Like, it stands out whenever you pull this off the shelf. I just, I love the color tone of this. Um, and, and even the video, like the color tone of the video. You know, the HDR brings a lot to the table. And I've never seen this film like this. And I think it's a really great transfer. I hate that I haven't talked about this release or this film on my channel yet. But Sleepy Hollow is one that you definitely need to add to your collection. So I Married an Axe Murder is a film that I've been wanting to see for like the last 15, 20 years. Because I saw a commercial for this as a kid and I'm like, Mike Myers and the girl from Rose Red? Weird. And when it was announced to come to 4K, I hopped on this release. Like, I bought it day one. That Tuesday? Bro, I, I rushed to Best Buy. Like, I think I went there like when it opened. I was so excited for this. Even though it turned out to be like a 3 out of 5 for me. Speed. Is one of the best action films from the 90s. Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock in here are great. So is Dennis Hopper and then, um, what's his name, Jeff Daniels. They all do really great in here. And even the transfer blew me away. And the story for this, you know, the plot and everything, revol revolving around, you know, this bus that can't go below 50 miles an hour, really action-packed. And one of my favorite action films from the 90s, if, if not one of my favorite action films of all time. Which is really weird because I'm not that big of an action guy. Next up we have the Spider-Man trilogy. My favorite trilogy of all time. Or at least one of my favorite trilogies of all time. It's this, the original Star Wars trilogy, and a couple of other trilogies. These films just mean so much to me. And I can't wait to watch these on 4K. Because I did demo all of these because I'm like, I have, I've, I've seen all these movies from VHS to DVD. I never had any of the Blu-rays. So like the jump from DVD to 4K on here looked really good. Um... It's not like the best 4Ks I've ever seen, but still, I'm glad to have these films in the best quality possible. We have this Walmart exclusive of Spider-Man No Way Home. I love this slipcover. Uh, when this came out, I told my friend to save me one because, you know, he worked, he works at Walmart. And, like, I was like, you need to save me this, bro. Like, like <laughs> if there's one thing that you ever do for me for the rest of my life, get this, please. Because this slipcover, I wish the slipcover artwork was on the um, actual cover art. Uh, you know underneath but it's not it's that ugly ass like swing from the film it just looks stupid it doesn't look right like this suits no way home better than this does i hate that th i hate this cover art i need to i need to get me like a fan art to put over it because this is just atro atrocious and speaking of spider-man no way home which is one of my favorite spider-man films of all time definitely in my top three if not my five it was my number two but you know now that I think about it, I do enjoy a couple more movies over this. And the first, like, 45 minutes to an hour, that plot sucks, okay? But I guess whatever we need to get through to get to, like, one of the best Spider-Man films of all time, like, the last 45 minutes of this film, great. I love it. So, like, even though I am sounding a bit mixed on it, it's still, like, an 8 out of 10 for me. But this is the only film that I've ever double-dipped on when it comes to 4K. Like, I own this movie twice on 4K. Because I had to get this. This still book was out of print for the longest time. And I wish I pre-ordered it from Best Buy. But thankfully Walmart stepped up their game and re-released it. And this was one that I'm like... I told my family and friends, I'm like, you need to get this for me, please. Now on to Star Wars, a.k.a. A New Hope. I absolutely love the original trilogy. I watched these. I showed these to my wife for the first time like a year ago. And for the most part, they still hold up for me. Like, even the worst one, or even my least favorite of this trilogy is still like a 4 out of 5. That being Return of the Jedi. These films are still really great. And I got a video coming out within like the next week or two that you guys need to check out. If you're a big Star Wars fan, especially the OG trilogy. Speaking of the OG trilogy, we have The Empire Strikes Back. Which is my personal favorite Star Wars film alongside millions of others. This movie is great. It's like a 92 for me. This movie holds up really well. I don't have much that I can say about it that hasn't already been said, even though I do want to do reviews on all the Star Wars films sometime this year or next year, hopefully, fingers crossed, because like I said, I love all of these films, or at least the original trilogy. Speaking of which, we have Return of the Jedi. Still a really good film. Like I said, four out of five, even for this one, even though this one's my least favorite of the trilogy. 
four out of five. Now on to my current least favorite Star Wars film of all time. I don't have every Star Wars film on 4K yet, but I will by the time I release this video again, or at least have an updated version. My least favorite being The Last Jedi. Now... I do want to give this film another chance. That's why I bought it, because I saw this for $12 at CD Warehouse, and I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. $12, even for my least favorite Star Wars film? Sure. Like, The Force Awakens was one of my most anticipated films of all time. For the most part, it paid off for me at the time. And then this, whenever they said Luke Skywalker is finally coming back, I was like, damn it, i got to wait two more years? Damn, this sucks, but I, I can't wait to see Luke Skywalker again. And, uh... <laughs> when I saw it, you could say I was pretty disappointed, which is a pretty big understatement. Like, I left the theater, and I let this be the first Star Wars film that my wife ever saw, and I felt like absolute shit for it, or at least of the Skywalker saga. I think we watched Rogue One before this. Yeah. I regret letting her see this one first, because <laughs> when I showed her the original trilogy, she was like, I don't know if that's really going to be my thing. Thankfully, thankfully, she ended up enjoying them a lot. But yeah, this is one that I'm like, you know, disappointment is understatement of the year when it comes to this movie. But like I said, I'm willing to give it another chance. Next, we have my most recent purchase, which I got on Facebook Marketplace for $10. And that's the Target exclusive of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This is the only one of the Skywalker saga that I've never seen because Last Jedi put such a bad taste in my mouth that I didn't want I didn't want to associate with Star Wars anymore. That's why I didn't watch Solo and that's why I didn't watch this movie. Given I do want to watch this one and I do want to watch Solo and I want to watch the entire franchise again. So I know it sounds like I'm dogging on these films, which like I said, I've only seen The Last Jedi once, but I am willing to give it another chance because that was almost seven years ago. I'm sure I'll enjoy it maybe a bit more. I don't know, but The Last Jedi is probably like the most divisive film of all time. Sully is a film that my wife told me that I need to get because she saw like a video of it on Facebook and she's like, I need you to buy this for me. And I did. And I bought the cheapest option because I'm like, I'm not paying 25 for a used copy. So I got like this for 15 and usually me and her, me and her movie taste doesn't really coalesce with each other. This one I still think is a really good film. She enjoyed it more than I did, but I still give this like a four out of five. Tales from the Dark Side is one of my most disappointing films of all time alongside The Last Jedi because I've been waiting 15, 20 years to see this because I remember seeing this as a kid and the last segment with the gargoyles absolutely terrified me. The scene, the segments leading up to that terrified me as well, but nothing held a candle to the gargoyles. This movie does not hold up for me. This movie, I thought, was atrocious when I saw it again. I do want to give it another chance. I don't know when. But now that I know what I'm getting myself into, I might enjoy it a bit more next time. But for having 15, 20 years worth of anticipation and it being like a 5 out of 10, this was a damn big-ass disappointment. Do not like this movie. The practical effects are really good until we get to the gargoyles, which look really stupid now. I don't know how in the fuck they terrified me, but they did. Like, that movie scared me so much that I didn't want to see it again, and then as I got older, I'm like, I want to see this again and see if it actually holds up. It doesn't. <sighs> Talk to me. I find this movie to be very overrated, and I was rooting for this film because it was YouTubers that made it. Or at least someone that I classify as a YouTuber who I only know from YouTube. So I was like, YouTubers making a horror film that's being praised by everyone? Hell yes, dude. Like, this is what we need right now. And I saw it and I'm like, this is really disappointing. It's like a 6 out of 10 for me, but I do want to give it another chance because I do want to get on the hype train with this and I do want to really like this movie, but I don't. I just think it's okay. I've said this before, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem means a lot to me, even though this movie is like a 7 out of 10. This is the second film that my brother's ever seen in the movie theaters, and I took him. Um, I gotta take him again because it's been like 7 or 8 months, but he needs to go to the theaters again. I want to be that brother, you know? But yeah, Mutant Mayhem, it's fun. I don't know if I watched this 4K yet or not, but I know I saw this movie twice. I saw it by myself and then with my brother. I don't think I watched this 4K yet. I might show it to my wife sometime soon, 
But while looking at this, I wish the turtles looked like this. Like when I saw the first scene of the turtles looking like that, and I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Even though I already knew that they're going to look like that. And I'm like, why do they look like that? I wish they looked like that throughout the entire film. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more. Probably not. It's still good, but not not great. Now on to a very controversial release, that being Terminator 2 on 4K, which people held this as the worst 4K that there is. No, it's not. May I redirect you to my statement about 300 on 4K? Okay. You can say what you want about it being DNR'd to death. See my comments about Lord of the Rings trilogy. Those are DNR'd to death as well. Yes, there is a lot of DNR in here, but I didn't fully mind it. The only thing that like rubbed me the wrong way is... Me not knowing that I grew up on the director's cut. When I, when I didn't see a certain scene in this theatrical version, I'm like, what the hell? Like, I always thought I, I always thought I was watching the theatrical ones. No, I grew up with the director's cut. So, like, it was really weird watching this one and having certain scenes not there. Um, but this is, like, my favorite still book in my collection, if I'm not mistaken. Like, this is beautiful. Regardless if you hate the transfers or not, you need to get this release because... Even on eBay, I think it's pretty cheap. But look at that. That is... I made a video about it already. This is gorgeous. I love this. And uh, I still get a lot of comments on my video about this transfer to this day. People hating it, thinking it's okay. Like, very across the board when it comes to those comments. I've been called certain names because I like this transfer and I don't mind it. But I get it. Terrifier 2. I am surprised that this got a 4K because... I believe the first one only got a Blu-ray, and even then it was hard to find when this came out. I think the Blu-rays, even with the disc by itself, was like 25 bucks, and, and then it with the case was like 40 or 45 I'm like, I'm not paying that much for that movie. While I love Art the Clown as a character, I don't entirely love his movies. I'm not the biggest fan of this one either, but I'm glad it has a 4K. I do need to give it another rewatch because uh, this one... Man, this one went way too over the top for me in certain scenes. And there is like, I, I love my slashers and I love when people get teared to bits. But this was a bit much for me, man. It just felt very unnecessary. But I love the character of Art the Clown. That's like my relationship with Michael Myers. I love the character of Michael Myers. I just don't love his movies. Same case with Art the Clown. I love the character. I'm not a big fan of his movies. Even though I do need to give the Terrifier films another chance. The Adams Family. This looks really great on 4K. I don't know who released this. Oh, Paramount. They need to get on to the second one because this looked so good. It looked great in 4K. This is one of my favorite 90s films on 4K. You need to check this out because it just looks absolutely awesome. And now it comes with even more Mamushka. This is one that you need in your collection because this movie is great. The transfer is great. And even the four or five minutes, or actually the... Two minutes extra that we get in here is really fun. It's just like a, a longer dance sequence, but I thought it was really fun. And they remastered that in 4K, so it looked really good. No quality dip at all. The only thing that looks really weird about it is like the hand effects. But that's because they use a green screen or a blue screen, so like I get it. But this movie looks great in 4K, and I need to rewatch it. And I hope that they come out with the second one, because when they do, I'm going to be watching both back-to-back, -back, and I want to do reviews on these. The Batman. <sighs> I hate that I don't love this movie either. It's still good. It's like a 76% for me. May have gone down since then. I don't entirely know. But I do want to give this one a rewatch. Maybe I'll like it even more. If not, I still think Robert Pattinson is my favorite or second favorite Batman that there is. Because we finally get Detective Batman that actually gets shit done. And then this is Batman like his first two or three years as Batman. But I think this movie like climaxed way too early. You know? It felt like this film was going to end, and then they just had another big sequence that climaxes, and then the film ends. Not entirely for me. There's a lot of mixed aspects with this film for me, but I still think it's a good film. A lot of people in my life don't really entirely enjoy this film, and I totally get it. I enjoy it more than they do, but even then it's like a 7 out of 10 or 76%. The Black Phone. When I saw this, I absolutely loved this movie to death. And when they announced that they were only coming out with a DVD and Blu-ray, I thought that was absolute bullshit. So I refused to buy it. And then they announced it like a year or two later that it was coming to 4K. And I'm like, hell yeah, dude, we, 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 we needed this movie on 4K. No, we didn't. The 4K wasn't the best, okay? It, it, it looks decent, but to have us wait a year or two for this, this transfer wasn't the best. And even then, I don't know if it was because of the transfer... I don't love this movie anymore. I just really like it. You know, it went from like a 92% or whatever down to like an 80. 
I don't know what it is. Maybe, I don't know, man. Still a really good film, and I highly recommend it, and I think it, I think it performed at the box office really well, and we're getting a sequel, oddly enough, even though this movie ended pretty definitively, but I still want to see it. The Blob. I watched this the day after I saw Tales from the Dark Side, and I'm like, please don't let this movie let me down. And it didn't. It, it was enjoyable enough. I enjoyed it more than uh, Tales from the Dark Side. This is like a 7 out of 10. It's a decent remake. I've never seen the original, so I can't really say if it is a decent remake or not, but to me, it's a decent film. So, The Blob, really fun time, really good release from Screen Factory. I think it looked really good. The Cabin in the Woods. I think this slip cover still book looks really cool. It's one of my favorites in my collection. And I got this from Best Buy. I remember when it came out to Best Buy, I didn't get it because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to, I still, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this film, you know, more than I did before because I saw this film when it, I saw this film like seven, eight years ago and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought it was going to be a straight up horror film, which it's not, you know, it's a comedy horror film. And like, it was just like, I was turned off by that at the time, but I've come to really enjoy this film, except for one scene, that being the wolf head scene, I thought was unnecessary. They could have took that out, and maybe this film would have been like a 9.5, if not a 10, you know? But this film is still really good. If it wasn't for that scene, I'd enjoy it a lot more. Still, like I said, 9 out of 10. I think it's a really fun time. Now on to a release that I was looking for at my Walmart for, the, for like two or three weeks. I remember when this came out, I wanted to pre-order it, but it sold out. And... Even then, even now, like, when you go to Walmart, on the Walmart app, it still says it's sold out everywhere, even though I found this in store. But some of you may know what I'm talking about, but that is the Walmart exclusive of The Crow. This looks amazing, okay? This movie has such an iconic star that had way too much potential and sadly lost his life at such a tragic young age. And uh, is why I'm wanting to go on a little quick weight loss journey and um, dress up as the crow for Halloween, even though I'm 25. I know. I haven't been trick-or-treating since I was like 18. I want to do it again. Because <laughs> like the last few years, I've just sat at home, watched horror films, or I went to a nightclub once on Halloween, and it just didn't feel like Halloween to me. I, I fucking hated it, but that's way off topic. I want to take my little brother and sister trick-or-treating, and I want to dress up as the crow. Hopefully I'll get down to my uh, weight goal by then. Anyways, I got the Dark Knight Trilogy on 4K, which is one that I wanted to get as soon as I, you know, got introduced to 4K and started collecting 4K. But I think at the time it was like $80, and I'm like, I'm not spending $80 on three films. Even at the time, I loved these films at the time, and I'm like, they're great films, I just don't want to pay that much money for three movies. So I waited till this dropped down to like $59.99, and I was like, uh... I might get it. I don't know. And then it dropped down to fifty four ninety nine, and I'm like, yeah, that's a little bit closer. I, I might, I might. And then I saw other movies, and I'm like, I'll wait to get this. And then this dropped down to forty nine ninety nine. I'm like, okay, it's probably not gonna go any further down in price. So I'm gonna have to get it. Got it Best Buy for forty nine ninety nine, basically fifty bucks. So, like, <sighs> I hate that I don't love any of these films either. I don't love any Batman film to be honest. Which is weird because I love Batman. He's my second favorite superhero of all time. But my favorite, oddly enough, is The Dark Knight Rises. I love this movie. And even then, it's not great, but it has such a nostalgic feel to me because I saw this movie with my sister, my mom, and my aunt. So, like, that movie just has a lot of nostalgia to me. But I don't know. I don't love any of these movies, even my favorite. Like I said, The Dark Knight Rises. Next up, we have a really great Christopher Walken film, that being The Dead Zone. I believe I gave this, like, 83%, but... I watched the DVD and I was like, my mom, this is like one of the only few films that she asked me to actually review. And I put it off for like six months because I was like, they're probably going to come out with a 4K. And after six months, and this was down during the time where I wasn't making reviews either. So I was like, they're probably going to announce a 4K. And then I was like, nah, I feel bad. She's been waiting six months. So I reviewed it. And then six months later, they came out with the 4K. And I'm like, are you fucking serious, dude? So I bought it. I haven't watched it yet on 4K, but I'm. people say it looks really good. And Screen Factory, like 80, 90% of the time, do great with their transfers. So I can't wait to watch this because I love this movie. The Exorcist is a film that I have a lot more respect for it than I do enjoyment. Still a good film. I don't know if I reviewed it on my channel or not. I think I did like five years ago. 
People cannot believe that I didn't watch The Exorcist up until that point, okay? I was 20, okay? <laughs> That's my argument. Some people grew up with the film. I get it, but it was one of those films that my mom didn't let me watch. And I get why. <laughs> because some of the language and subject material, I get it. And then once I once I had it and she came over and she was like, oh, you have The Exorcist? I'm like, yeah. So I let her borrow it. And she was like, yeah, this movie's a bit weird. And uh, goes goes a little too far in certain places. I'm like, yeah, I agree. So... I haven't heard the best about this video transfer. Um, I don't know if it was from, I don't know if it's because of the source or the cameras that they used or not, but I haven't heard the best uh, about this transfer, but I do want to get, I do want to watch this and I do want to get uh, The Exorcist 3 on 4K, which oddly enough came out before The Exorcist on 4K. Really weird. The Fablements, another one of those films which I where I had way too high of expectations. This is basically like, a fictionalized sort of autobiography of Steven Spielberg. I thought it was going to be one thing, but it turned out to be something different. And I'm like, oh, that's it? Still a good film. It's like a 7 out of 10. But like when your expectations are this high about a Steven Spielberg film about his life, I thought it would. I thought it was, you know, going to be something else. But still a good film. I'm glad that I own it. But I wish it was what I thought it was going to be, which... You can never get that, you know? Okay, so this next film might be... Actually, it is a bit controversial, which I, I get it. Some people hate this movie because of the lead actor in here and the fact that they don't like this movie in general. And some of them just refuse to watch it because of the lead actor. I totally get it. But this is the first film that I ever took my brother to uh, to see in the movie theaters, that being The Flash. So this movie does mean a lot to me. One, because of that, like me taking my brother to it, you know... I saw it by myself, and then I saw it with him. So, like, I have that sentimental thing going on. The fact that this was his first movie at the theater, I took him to his first movie. That means a lot to me. And then the story behind this one as well. Losing a parent way too young and trying to see them one last time. I get it. I mean, I don't... I mean, I get it. I just can't fully relate because neither of my parents have passed away yet, but... It's one that, like, once they pass away, or at least when one of them passes away, I'm sure it's going to hit way harder. But I hate this fell to the box office, but I totally get it because the lead actor and then the fact that, like, it's Ben Affleck's last outing as Batman. And then we thought that Michael Keaton was going to be our Batman in the DCU, but then the DCU was ending. So, like, this movie sort of just didn't feel worth it. Especially, like, this movie has such wasted potential. Like, the girl that, the woman that plays Supergirl... I loved her in this movie. And then, like, the little joke at the end with George Clooney's Batman. I thought that was great. And all the cameos galore in here I thought was fantastic. Like, I just, I hate that this film failed at the box office, but I totally get it. The Green Mile. This is, like, a film that I didn't grow up with it, but I saw, like, maybe five minutes of this film as a kid because I think my mom had it on VHS. Yeah, she had the VHS tape. I don't know if it was recorded. I don't think it was. No, it was an official release. But... I remember seeing like five minutes of this and really wanting to see it. And then like I went 20 years without seeing it. I still haven't seen it, okay? But I went 20 years without seeing it. And then I, I learned that Frank Darabont directed this, which one of my favorite uh, directors of all time, even though he's directed very few movies. And I haven't seen all of them. I think I've seen all of them except one or two. But Shawshank Redemption was a film that I did not want to see at all. Because I'm like, what... How good can a prison movie be? And then the Shawshank Redemption blew my socks off. And I'm like, okay, I got my eye on Frank Darabont now. And so when they released this on uh, 4K, I'm like, I have to get it and I have to watch it. And then I got it. I just didn't watch it. And even then, I waited like a year after it released to get it when it went down in price to like $18. So The Green Mile, I haven't watched it yet. I really do want to, especially since it's Frank Darabont and it's another prison film. So I think, you know, him and prison films coalesce with each other next we have the fifth element i don't know if this was one of my first films that i ever got on 4k i'm not entirely sure but it's a really good uh release the transfer in here looks really great i remember when i watched it for the first time i was actually blown away i'm like this looks this good and i don't know if i have the vhs or not i definitely have the dvd but it was such a big uptick in quality like if you don't own this release you need to and i think arrow if i'm not mistaken came out with their own version people say that looks better I can't imagine this film looking any better, but I might double dip. I don't know. I still really like this film, so like I'm debating on double dipping, but I don't know. The Howling. This used to be like one of my favorite werewolf films of all time. 
not so much anymore. I'm not the biggest fan of certain subject material, um, but the, the werewolf transformation scene looks amazing. You know, I need to own an American werewolf in uh, London because that is on 4K. People say that's the best werewolf film of all time, even though my personal favorite being Silver Bullet, which we already touched upon that. But yeah, this film, like I said, growing up, it was one of my favorites. Not so much anymore. Uh, but the, the like I said, the werewolf transformation scene is amazing. But this transfer isn't entirely the best either. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's reference quality when it comes to like an 80s werewolf film on 4k silver bullet looked a lot better which is the same the same uh company that scream factory they both did it i don't know where i don't know if it's because the source material or, the, or the the cameras that they used i'm not entirely sure it looks good it's the best it's ever gonna look but it's not great the invisible man this is a remake that makes sense in today's culture and it's one that i was a fan of it was one that i didn't you know really care to watch until I learned that Lee Wynell directed this. So, like, he's a great director. He's made Insidious 3, Upgrade, and then this. Both Insidious 3 and Upgrade are great films. But I remember being under the influence of alcohol with this one, so I didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones. I gave it, like, a 7 out of 10. But I do need to rewatch it because I don't think you being under the influence of alcohol really, like, determines how you really feel about a film. But... I don't know. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but still good. The Last of Us. This thing, I think this is the only TV series I have on 4K right now. I might get more down the road. I don't know yet. I know they announced Friends on 4K, but I'm not a big Friends fan. I bought my wife the DVD set, and then I told her about the 4K. She's like, you need to get it for me. I'm like, I don't want to spend 250 on a show that I'm not going to watch. But, I mean, I might. I don't know. I spent $40 on this. But then again, I love the Last of Us games. We're going through the PS5 remake of the first one, or remaster of the first one, and like once we get done with that, we're going to watch this, and then we're going to play The Last of Us Part 2 again. So like we've been on a Last of Us kick, and I hate that I haven't um, reviewed this yet, which I might, do, I might do it, even though I think the show, the second season, is not going to come out for another year. But either way, I can't wait to watch this again. I remember this being really close to the source material, so like I thought it was a really great show. The Lost Boys, this is my absolute favorite vampire film of all time, even though I haven't seen it in like seven or eight years. I remember growing up with this one and watching it through my teenagehood as well. Like, This still is, to this day, my favorite vampire film, even though I haven't seen it in such a long time. But I am scared to watch it. Like, Now that I'm more critical and now that I've changed, I don't know if I'm going to love it, but like, I need to stop thinking like that. I want to do a review series because I do own the other ones on, on DVD because it came with a three-pack and like... I love The Lost Boys and I need to rewatch it. I hope that I love it still, but I need to watch this. I don't have any excuse other than the fact that like I'm scared to watch it because I don't think I'm going to love it. I don't know. My my brain works really weird sometimes. You guys probably already noticed that because this video has been way too long of me rambling on about stupid shit. Well, the movies aren't stupid, but you know what I mean. The Maltese Falcon, another great black and white film in 4K. This looks absolutely great. This Casablanca, it came from outer space, and a couple others look really great in 4K. This being one of them, you need to get this release. I remember I bought this in Casablanca within the same day, because like I said, I went on a film noir kick, and this one holds up for the most part. I still need to give it a rewatch. I gave it like an 8 out of 10. The ending didn't fully work with me, because it felt like it just didn't pay off, but like... I need to watch it again because I haven't showed my wife this yet. But she's seen... We watched Casablanca together, though. The Man from Nowhere. This is one that I bought when I bought The Wailing as well, which you'll see that later. I haven't watched this one yet, but I have watched The Wailing. So, like, I need to watch this because I, I do love foreign films, you know? So, need to watch it. I don't know if it's any good. You guys let me know. Even then, like, I watched The Wailing. I gave it, like, a 8 out of 10. It was still really good. The Man Who Fell to Earth. This is one that I haven't watched yet, but I remember... This still book, seeing the still book, I'm like, I have to get it based off this still book. This still book looks great. Never seen this movie, um, but I remember, I remember when my Best Buy had this. I was like, yeah, I'll wait to get it when it drops in price. And then it went out of print. Like people were selling it for like seventy, eighty dollars on eBay. I'm like, damn, I missed out for real, bro. And then I went to Best Buy and somehow. By some weird chance, they had it again. And I'm like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to get it. I don't care if it's almost $25. I'm getting it because I'm not going to miss out again on this. Because I think this is the only release of this uh, in the States. So, like, I'm glad I got it. Even though I haven't watched it yet. 
The Mummy, three film series. This is the first two films mean a lot to me. I've only seen the third one once. Once again, under the influence of alcohol, and I didn't love it. I love the first two, though, even though I haven't seen them in years, but I grew up with these first two films absolutely loving them. And I can't wait to watch it on 4K, even though I'm pretty sure certain CGI is going to look atrocious on 4K. They looked atrocious back on DVD and VHS. It's probably going to look a lot worse on 4K. Um, but anyways, this is one of my last purchases from Best Buy. It's one that, like... I always wanted to get, but I'm like, I, I don't know if I want to spend $36 right now. And now that they're shutting down, I'm like, bro, get it. And then it would drop down to 30 I'm like, you need to get it. I don't care. You know, you're not talking yourself out of it. So I got it. And yet, I still haven't watched these on 4K. The Mist. I love this movie. I watched this when this came out. Like, this is a four-disc set. I think this looks really cool, by the way. Like, I love this slipcover. I love, like, the 4K uhd little banner at the top it looks different from like normal uh 4k uhd banners i think it looks really cool but this comes with the colored version and black and white version uh, i ended up watching the black and white version with my wife uh whenever we got this i believe it's a 2k upscale but i still think it looks really good and i think the black and white version of this film like holds up really well and I've made my remarks multiple times throughout the videos that like black and white on 4K looks great. Another great example, if you haven't seen this in black and white, you need to. The Nightmare Before Christmas is the first film I ever pre-ordered from Best Buy, I believe. I think it's the first movie I've ever pre-ordered in general because I've always like wanted to go in store to get something. I don't I don't I don't really care for you know buying it online or whatever, but yeah, either way, the nightmare before Christmas. Another film that I have a lot more respect than I do enjoyment out of. This is one of my mom's favorites, but it's just one that hasn't fully clicked with me. Even though it is like a 7 out of 10 for me, it's just not really my style. And the source material for this, it looks great at times, and the other times it looks atrocious. So, like, I'm not... I don't know what to say about this. Like, this is... It's a good movie. I'm just not on the hype train about this. And, like, I don't know why it's still called Tim Burton's a Night The Nightmare Before Christmas when it was directed by uh, Henry Selick. Like, that's weird. Just because he's a producer on this, I believe, doesn't mean that, like, you should call it his film. Just because he wrote the story, either. Like, it's the director. He needs more recognition than what people have been giving him. Next up, we have The People Under the Stairs. A really weird Wes Craven film that I saw bits and pieces of as a kid and I only remember like certain scenes with the you know malnourished kids it's like the only thing I remember from here but yeah this is um it's an okay film it's like a six or seven out of ten for me it looks good in 4k and I love the lead actor in here I forgot what his name is but he played in um uh the Sandlot, which I watch, which I watched the other day, which is a film that needs a 4K, but it doesn't. But I have the Blu-ray now, and it's uh, still looks good on Blu-ray, and the movie still holds up really well for me. It's still like a nine out of ten. I love that movie. He does great in that film, and he does really good in here as well. The Polar Express. This is a film that I first watched in elementary school in second grade, when we had like we were about to um go out for Christmas break. And uh, they were playing this like the day of, I think it was like Thursday or Friday that we were leaving. And they played this on the last day before Christmas break. And I remember loving it. And I was like, this is one of the best Christmas movies of all time. And then I watched it again like a couple years later. Was like, yeah, it's okay. And then I watched it again. I was like, oh, it's really good. And then I watched it again. I'm like, eh, it's I. So like, <laughs> if I watch it again, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say it's great. Because you see, it, it, this movie's gone back and forth with me. But I'm really scared to watch it because, like, I might not like it. Even though right now I still just think it's okay. But knowing how this movie looks and how they try to make it look realistic 20 years ago. Almost 20. It's going to be 20 next year. How that's going to look on 4K if it's going to have this uncanny valley uh, feel to it or not. But either way, uh, I'm going to watch it this Christmas. I was going to watch it last Christmas because I bought, like, three or four Christmas movies on 4K leading up to Christmas of 2023, and then I didn't watch any of them except one that I already owned, that being Home Alone. So yeah, The Polar Express. If you guys love it, let me know. If you don't, I get it. Uh, because like the reviews for this have been very across the board as well. You know, Sort of like how my feelings are about this film. I love it, hate it, love it, hate it, so I'm hoping to love it.
The Prestige is a film that I grew up with. It's a Christopher Nolan film that I grew up with. I remember loving this. And then I watched this like two or three years ago. It doesn't fully hold up for me. And the transfer doesn't look that great either. Some people say it looks great. I, I'm not one of those people. Um, but the, the cast is great. Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Scarlett Johansson, and David Bowie, and Andy Serkis. Great cast, but not the biggest fan of this film anymore. Which I hate that because it was one of my favorite films as a kid. It's weird how that works. Anyways, The Punisher. I love this still book. I remember when this was announced and, you know, I I remember day one on Tuesday getting this. I'm like, I have to get it. Even though, like, at the time, I haven't seen The Punisher in, like, 10, 15 years. Uh, I, I watched this when this came out. I remember really enjoying it. You know, I think this is an underrated um, Punisher film, or actually an underrated Marvel film. And uh, I wish I wish there was a scene of him in Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. But you do see Thomas Jane in Spider-Man 2, which I think is really cool. It's just not... Um, it's just wasted potential, I believe. You know, like... They could have had the Punisher and Spider-Man and X-Men all together. That would have been great. Um, anyways, The Revenant. It's the last of like the first set of films I ever bought for 4K. This looks really good. And I remember doing a review on this with Anthony A. Perez. So if you guys have seen that, let us know. It's a really fun collab that I did. I need to collab with him sometime soon. Uh, but The Revenant, really great film. I remember uh, four of us went to go see it. It was me, my sister, my aunt, and her daughter-in-law sort of um but yeah two of us liked it two of us didn't it was me and my sister that liked it and then like my aunt and her um daughter-in-law didn't really care for it but revenant great film uh leo definitely deserves the oscar i believe he received or the academy award he, he deserved whatever he got okay and then one of my favorite films of all time the shawshank redemption frank darabont like i've said before one of my favorite directors of all time I wish he was still directing films, but he's not. But he, I think he did the first season of The Walking Dead. There's so much wasted potential with that show, too. Like, like I'm enjoying the show. Like I, like I said, like I showed you guys before, I bought the box set. But, like, we're on season five now, even though, like, I bought it, like, four months ago. But regardless, like, I feel like there was such wasted potential, like, him not coming back. And then AMC screwing him over, like... It makes you think what The Walking Dead could have been if he was still in charge, or at least where they would have went. Either way, I'm still enjoying myself with the show. Like, I'm not saying that that's, you know, it's bullshit. I mean, it is bullshit, but that it's not good because it is good, you know? And then the story behind this one, The Silence of the Lambs. I remember when this came out, I think it was around the same time that Misery came out, and I went to my Best Buy looking for both of these because they didn't show up on the website. I'm like, okay, we're going to get lucky. We're going to find them. We didn't find them, or I, I didn't find them because I went by myself. I didn't find either of these titles, and I don't think Misery ever came to Best Buy stores. So, you know, I was bummed on that, but I did buy, like, other films to replace these two that I was looking for. And then, like, two weeks later, I went to a different Best Buy. They had it, and I'm like, of course. Another funny story behind this one, The Suicide Squad. I know this is the Blu-ray uh, slipcover. I love this slipcover, so I, so I sort of stole it. Sort of, not really, but did, because I did buy I did buy the 4K. I just switched out the slip covers because I didn't like the slip cover that was with this. I love this. I don't know why we didn't get it for the for the 4K. It's one of my favorite lenticular covers that I've ever had. I still think it looks really great. It's definitely the better option than having this. This is just great. I love that. Um, definitely better than Suicide Squad, but. It's uh, it's it's still really good. It's just not as great as everyone says it is. But it is a bummer that this wasn't a box office success because it does deserve it. The Super Mario Bros. movie. Had a fun time with this one. I saw it once in theater. I think this is like one of the first films that I reviewed last year after my like six month long break. This is a fun time. It's not great, um, but I did have a fun time rewatching it like a month ago with my wife. We had fun with it, but it's not great. But you know. Still a fun time. And uh, I totally get why it was a big success at the box office last year. But this is a fucking horrid uh, still book. I hate this still book. But I only bought it because, like like I said, Best Buy was getting rid of their stuff. And then Walmart bought a lot of their stuff. And I saw this at Walmart. And I'm like, I have to get it because they don't have the regular slipcover edition. John Carpenter's The Thing. 
This and another film that you guys will see here in a minute or two are my two favorite John Carpenter films because I do think Halloween is overrated. I do love the character Michael Myers, but The Thing is definitely the superior film. The way that this film ends off with, one of the best endings of all time, and the practical effects in here are amazing. The story is great, very tension-filled, and I highly recommend it. I remember the first time I watched it, usually when people hype up films, I'm disappointed. While I don't love this movie as much as other people do, I got the hype of this one. Like, it, it didn't disappoint me in the slightest. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Thanks to this movie, I am a big fan of Pedro Pascal now. Which I didn't know he was in Kingsman 2 until after the fact. And I'm like, what? Because I love him in The Last of Us. I love him in this. One of my favorite actors of modern day. His episode on Hot Ones was really great too. But this one sort of means a lot to me as well. Because I went to go see this with me and my wife. And then our two best friends. And uh, <laughs> we all had a great time with this. I mean, it's not like a, a superb film. It's a really fun time. And it's great most of the time. And there is just one scene in here, the acid scene. That's like the hardest I've laughed at the movie theater for a comedy that's not jackass in like five to ten years. This, that scene, I was still laughing at it like five minutes later. And my friend beside me was like, are you still laughing at that? And I'm like, yes. I want to show certain family members that haven't seen it yet and just show them that scene because it's great. But the bromance between Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal, really great. I wish they were in another movie together. And I hate that this was like not a big box office uh, success because it definitely deserves it. It's a fun time. Like, If you don't have this in your collection, you need to, regardless if it's DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. You just need to own it because it's a fun time. If you're a fan of Nicolas Cage, then you'll get a kick out of this movie. The Wailing. Funny story with this one. I forgot to tell it with The Man From Nowhere. So this is there was a Best Buy that's like an hour away from me that I never went to. And I was looking for these wasn't the first time I went there, it was the second time. So this is the second time I ever went to that uh, Best Buy. And I was looking for this because mine didn't have it. It said that this Best Buy that I went to, the, the one that's an hour away, is the closest one that has this title and The Man From Nowhere. So I drove like an hour out just to get these two movies. And this guy that I bought the movies from, he was like, um, do you want to be part of our membership? It's only this and this amount of uh, money a month. And I'm like... No, no thank you, because like y'all are getting rid of your movies, and the only reason why I come to Best Buy is because of the movies. He was like, oh. Yeah, the conversation between me and that man was just really awkward. I didn't know if he just didn't want to be at work or what. He was just really like, yeah, it's it's sunny out today. It was raining yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be uh, $42.05. Alright, all right, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a good day now. Yeah, you too, man. Really weird, but the way I think it's a good film. Um, I still need to see The Man From Nowhere, but really enjoyed that. It's a really great foreign film. The next film I'm about to show you is the most amount of money I spent on a still book, if I'm not mistaken. That's because this one's out of print, and that being The Wizard of Oz. It's a really great still book. I love this. I remember when I saw pictures of it, I'm like, I have to have it. But, once again, I'm very sorry, Robbie Long from Ogre Boy 1992. I know this is your favorite movie of all time. But I don't love this movie anymore. I did as a kid. This was, like, top five, top ten movies of all time. And then I watched it again, like, you know, whenever I got this. And I'm like, this is, uh, it's just not the same. And then I tried to watch it again, once again. Just didn't click with me, so... Robbie, I'm hoping that whenever I watch this again, I'll enjoy it as much as I did as a kid. But for now, it's not but this 4K. But Robbie, if you're watching this, make sure to get a 4K player and a 4K TV sometime soon and get this release, regardless if it's the steelbook or just the regular slipcover, because I think the slipcover is like 10, 15 bucks. This looks great when you get to like the colored section of this film, because you know, like the first 10 minutes is like the sepia tone. It looks good, but the colored scenes in here, once she opens the door, has never looked better. And this this 4K is so good, you can actually see lines in the painting, the painted backgrounds that you've never seen before. And you can see where the set ends and the painting begins. So I just, really great 4K. I just hate that I don't love this movie anymore. They Live, this is the other John Carpenter film I was talking about. This and The Thing, these are my two favorite John Carpenter films. I don't know which one's superior for me, but they're both pretty equal on my terms. This, still holds up to this day like the story behind this one still holds up yes this one is very cheesy and there's like a five minute fight sequence between keith david and 
Roddy Piper, like, dude, this movie is really good. And the the imagery is so iconic. You know, just like in The Thing, there's imagery in both of these films that's very iconic. And the, the one-liners that Roddy Piper gives in here, amazing. To Kill a Mockingbird, I'm pretty sure this is going to look great on 4K because this is another black and white film. But I don't know if I've seen this or not, but I, I remember, you know, in high school, we all read this in either middle school or high school. So, yeah, I need to watch this again, even though I'm not a big, like, courtroom drama guy. But, like I said, black and white films look great in 4K. I need to give this one a chance. Then I got this two-film collection of the Top Gun films. I remember when I first saw this, I'm like, I have to get it because I love this cover art. It looks great. I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, it is the same underneath. So, like, I've only seen Top Gun Maverick. I've never seen the original. And then people try to tell me the story about the first one, trying to, like, walk around the spoilers. I'm like... I've seen Top Gun Maverick. I'm pretty sure I know what happens in the first film because you can't not know because they explain it in the second one. So I hate that I haven't seen the first one yet, um, but I, I'm hearing that Top Gun Maverick is like a reference quality disc, and uh, people even say that the first one looks great on 4K too. So, but, but a lot of people prefer Maverick over the original, so I'm excited to watch it. Total Recall, I forgot to bring up, this is the actual last of the first set of films I bought for 4K. Uh, Total Recall. It's, um, I remember watching this like five years ago for possibly a collab review, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Um, but I remember when I saw this cover, I'm like, I have to get it. I love the banner in here. I don't know who does Lionsgate. I love a lot of their banners when it looks like this. It looks great. It stands out from the, from the bunch. Um, uh, but yeah, this movie, while I don't love it as much as I used to, I think it still looks really good on 4K. And uh, I recommend you getting it because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty cheap now. So get it. Toy Story. Great, great film. Still holds up for me. You know, even now I give it like a 95%. This, like the first three films are a perfect trilogy for me because I give like a 95 to this one. The second one's 100%. Third one's like a 90. Like these first three films are great. This first one, just as great as the other ones, you know? And as my second favorite Toy Story film, it it still holds up, even though if the even though the CGI is a bit hit or miss for the most part. I mean, this movie is thirty years old now, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's 1994. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Don't hold me to it, but I think it is, or 95. I think it's 1995. Um, yeah, the first fully rendered CGI film still holds up in my book, even though some things do look a bit hit or miss. But it's still a great film. One of the best of all time. And then speaking of which, Toy Story 2 might actually be my favorite film of all time. I'm still not 100% on that, but I'm like 90% sure it is. <laughs> you know, I have to watch other films to... I don't really know what my other favorite films of all time are. Like, it's hard to make that list, but like Toy Story 2 always stands out. Like, if I think about it, I always think Toy Story 2. So it could be Toy Story 2. Toy Story 3. Like I said, it's a great film. But, growing up as a kid... I didn't think this movie was that great. For me, it was just the first two. And then as I got older, I started to appreciate this film even more, and then I've grown to love it. I still love it. This is probably the best looking of the 4Ks in here. And another thing that I love about these first three films on 4K, they're full screen, which cannot be said, which the same cannot be said about Toy Story 4. They have bars at the top and bottom. I'm like, are you serious? The first three were full screen. Now you have bars on top and bottom? What the hell? I remember when I saw this, this was like my second or third favorite in the Toy Story franchise. This is my least favorite Toy Story associated film that there is. I'm not saying it's a bad film because it's not, but I do not know what drugs I was on back in 2019 when this came out. I gave this a 9 out of 10. No, this is the lowest 74% I'll ever give. This is the lowest 7 out of 10 I will ever give, you know, but... I just hate what they did to the character of Buzz Lightyear, and just there's just a, a lot of things for me that I don't love about this film anymore. Um, but it's still a good film, and the animation looks great. But I wish it was full screen. It's another one of my complaints. But either way, it's still a good film. But oddly enough, I prefer Lightyear over Toy Story 4. A lot of people don't like this movie either. I like this one. You know, it's my fourth favorite of the Toy Story associated films. My fourth favorite. Haven't seen Buzz Lightyear Star Command, the little animated film that came out in like 2000-something. 
I haven't seen that. I don't know if I've seen the movie in full as a kid or if I saw episodes, so I can't really comment on that. I really do want to, though. Um, but I never got around to buying the DVD or if there even is a Blu-ray. I don't think there is. But either way, I haven't got around to buying it yet. But either way, this one's underrated. It's not great. It's a good film. I do prefer it slightly over Toy Story 4. Um, <laughs> but I got a story with this one, too. When I saw this in the theater... Someone brought their kids, which I hate when people bring kids to the movie theaters, but this is a kid's film, so I get it. But while this isn't my least favorite, you know, movie theater experience that I've ever had, there was this woman that brought like two or three of her kids and they were running about around the, the, the theater and they were like talking to each other and they would stop and sit down and talk to each other and go somewhere else. I'm like, what the fuck? But I remember like after we saw it, like there was a woman that walked by, she's like, is this movie good? I'm like... It's my least favorite of the Toy Story films at the time. I didn't rewatch Toy Story 4 yet, but I was like, it's my least favorite, but it's still good. She's like, oh, okay. And then this woman I saw it with, I was like, they need to get a leash on their kids. And this woman was like, yeah, I know. It's not a daycare. And I'm like, you're funny. The War of the Worlds. I believe this came out a year or two ago, maybe even more recent than that. But this was like another one of those last purchases from Best Buy. I've never seen this one. Um, and I haven't heard the entire radio play from the 50s or 30s or whenever the, the radio play came out. I would, I would love to hear that. I know it's on YouTube somewhere, but I've never seen this film. And it's a colored film from the 50s, which I think might look really good. I don't know. Um, but the Tom Cruise version, War of the Worlds. This is the first ever, you know, still book I ever bought. The first one ever. Because I saw it at Best Buy and I'm like I don't have a still book I need to get one so this one even though I'm not the biggest fan of this movie holds a special place in my heart this release does because it's my first still book I ever bought so I thought that was pretty cool Who Framed Roger Rabbit this is one that um, I haven't seen this movie since I was a kid and then I watched it when this came out and um, I think I think whenever I made a list with Andrew Kavanaugh from Kavanaugh's Corner I was going to put this on this list it, it could still be on the list but I thought this transfer when it was the some of the you know, drawn segments. I thought it looked crappy when it was blended in with uh, live action, but for the most part, it looked really good. It was just certain scenes that stood out to me, and I'm like, that does not look good. And for some reason, I'm like, it's one of the worst. It's not. Like, the live action segments in here, like, the film stuff looks great. I don't know what was what drugs I was on for that one either. <laughs> um, just joking. Anyways, this is the other $5 4K still book I got from Walmart, and that is Universal Soldier. Never seen this movie, and apparently it's a franchise, which is, I'm not saying it's weird, I've never seen it, so I don't know if it's, like, worthy of being a franchise, but still a really cool still book, and I'm glad I got it for $5, because whenever you can get a $5 4K still book, sign me up, bro, like, regardless if it's a bad movie or not, I'm gonna get it. Next, we have Upgrade by Lee Wynell. This is one of my favorite films of 2018. I remember I waited, like, four or five years to see it, or maybe I saw it this year, I don't know. But I bought this after like seeing this 4K for like the last two or three years. I finally got it whenever you know Best Buy announced that they weren't selling physical media anymore, and I was like, okay, I have to get it. I think it was still like eighteen dollars at the time. Definitely worth it. It's a really good film, and with a budget like the the thing that they accomplished with this budget, with it being a sci-fi film, really good. War Games is a film that I've never seen before, but it does have Matthew Broderick in it and Ali Sheedy, which I always had a big crush on Ali Sheedy, so. I need to get to this, even though I forgot what the plot for this movie is. So, if you guys have seen it, let me know. And I remember when I did a TikTok video about this, like, uh, someone made a comment saying this was really good. So, I need to check it out, even though I bought it almost a year ago. Warm Bodies. The best romance you're ever going to get between a zombie and a human being. That's a really weird sentence I just made. But if you've seen it, you know, but somehow it still works. It's oddly endearing, and I really I really do like this movie. I think it's like a 9 out of 10 in my book. <sighs> I got the Weird Science Era release. I believe this is a really recent um, uh, release. Oh, it's from 2023 or 2024. I don't know if I pre-ordered. No, I bought this like a couple months after it came out. So I either bought it early. Yeah, I bought it early this year, so it is a 2023 release. It looks really good in 4K. Uh, some of the things might not hold up today in today's standards, like because of certain things that go on in this film. I'm like, yeah, I used to love this film as a teenager, but now as an adult, I'm like, yeah, bump down to like a 7 out of 10 because some of the subject material is a bit weird. Um, but I still enjoy it nonetheless. Like, this is a really fun time if you haven't seen it yet. 
Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory. I think this was like the last. No, it's one of the last movies I ever bought from Target. I went there the other day, and their their segment, their aisles are just lacking. I know I already brought that up in this video, but you can't talk about Willy Wonka without talking about Wonka, which I haven't seen this movie yet, which I really do want to because I am a very recent Timothy Chalamet fan. So art is not as good as the original, but even then I don't love the original. So it could be on the same, same wavelength, but my friend was like, yeah, it's not that good. I'm like, oh, great. I, already, I just bought it on 4K for $33. So I hope that Charlie and Chocolate Factory comes out in 4K because you can't have like the first and third film in the franchise and not have the second one on 4K. But either way, can't wait to watch this. Um, I'm not a big musical guy, but I do like, I, I am a fan of some of them. We have Wonder Woman 1984, which this 4K sat at my Best Buy and the other Best Buys I went to. It sat on the shelves for like a year, dude. Like I would go into Best Buy every time. There'd be like a big stack of these. And um, I remember, I remember I was at work and my wife was like, I feel like buying you a movie. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. She was like, guess which one I got? And I'm like, I said like a horror title. She's like, oh, no, I been I got the one that you were talking about with a, uh, the 84 thing. I'm like, what is she talking about? Like the year 1984? Is there a cool horror film from 1984? No. She was all about this one. I'm like, yeah, it's a really cool still book, but I don't know if I want to see the movie. But either way, I'm glad she bought it. I mean, this is hers, but usually this is hers now because I gave it to her, but I keep all the 4Ks together, but I let her have her own little section of DVDs and Blu-rays. But like my 4Ks and her 4Ks have to be together because I love 4Ks. They have to be together. Then we have Young Guns, which this release means a lot to me as well because this is one that I was searching for as well. Like that, They didn't have it at my Best Buy, so I had to drive an hour out. And uh, at first, they didn't have it. And so like I bought something else instead. And then I came back to it the next time and got this. And then, you know, um, I got this and something else as well. So they finally had it. And I was like, thank the Lord, because... This is one that I've been wanting to come to 4K for a long time because this is like one of the only films that me and my dad's ever like bonded over. This is like one of his favorite films. So like whenever I see him again, I don't know when that'll be. I'd like to watch this with him. Um, even though me and him's not on like, we don't have the best relationship. It, 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 I'd still like to, you know, be with my dad and bond over something, you know. Anyways, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yes, I put it in the Z's because Zack Snyder... Um, but yeah, this is one that, I'm gonna put it this way, when I saw Justice League, uh, on TV, like, before I got this, I was like, yeah, it's good, it's fun, it's watchable, um, it's nowhere near as good as, like, the hype made it out to be, and then people started saying, release the Snyder Cut, and I'm like, that's not gonna work, because people have been saying release the air Cut for Suicide Squad for years, or, like, the whatever cut for any other film, never happens, somehow happened for this movie and i'm glad that it did because the circumstance that was dealt with this movie and then justice league was just a really disgusting thing like i'm glad he got to make this movie even though like i'm not as big on it as a lot of other people are but i do need to give it a rewatch because funny enough the first 4k disc in here doesn't play so i had to watch it on the blu-ray and then the second disc for the 4k does work so i got to watch the first half on Blu-ray and then the second half on 4K and I didn't notice like a big difference but maybe I need to watch it again. I don't know if I was sitting too far from the TV or not. I just couldn't see that big of a difference but either way I want to give this a rewatch sometime soon and just break it up in pieces like it's a, a mini series or something instead of all at once because that was uh <laughs> that was a lot to take in. Now we're down to the last three titles the first being Zombie. This movie I bought from a dear friend that doesn't make YouTube content anymore, or at least horror content. I don't know if he still makes like Christian-based content or not, but I bought this from him because he was selling part of his collection. And um, this one is one that I enjoyed the most out of the three films that he sent me, because I sold the other two because I needed money at the time because one was out of print and I I needed the money because I was in a certain financial state. I was in a certain financial crisis at one point within the last two years, so I had to sell it, and then I, I sold the other one because I didn't like it. I wish I still had them, regardless if I didn't like that one film, but maybe sometime down the line I'll get it. Um, but anyways, zombie, really fun and wacky, weird uh, zombie film. Um, it's one that I can't wait to watch again because the practical effects in here 
look really great. And it's the only time I've ever seen a zombie fight a shark. I have never seen any other film do that or pull it off. Now the last two films are a duology, that being Zombieland and Zombieland 2. So really quickly talking about the first Zombieland, this was my favorite zombie film, or at least one of my favorites, top two or three for the longest time. Like I saw this two or three years after it came out, because this came out in 2009, I'm guessing the DVD and Blu-ray came out in 2010. And then I remember when I was like 13, I actually like talked to my mom into getting this because she was a single mother, and whenever we bought movies, it was from like the $5 bin at Walmart. This was still $15 on DVD back in the day, even though it was like two or three years later. So somehow I talked her into getting this, and we all enjoyed it. And it was like a movie that we got to bond over and we had a really fun time with. And it's a movie that does mean a lot to me. I don't enjoy it as much as I used to, but it's still like in my top 10, top 15 zombie films of all time. It's still one of the best zombies out there, um, given... I've only seen bits and pieces of Shaun of the Dead, so I can't really make that statement. And then I heard, I don't know if, I don't know if this is true, but One Cut of the Dead is a zombie, but I'm not entirely sure about that. I, I did see the Blu-ray steelbook at Walmart, but I wish it was a 4K instead, because then it would feel worthy of paying $30. Then, you know, Zombieland Double Tap. A lot of people don't like this movie. I totally get it. I like it, not as much as the first, but it's still a really fun time. And I love the addition of uh, Rosario Dawson and uh, Zoe Dutch in here. Even though people hate her character, I still think this is a fun follow-up. It may be a bit disappointing to others, but I remember watching this with my two cousins and my sister. And uh, it was my youngest cousin and my sister's first zombie, or my their first horror film in the theaters. So like, it has a special place in my heart because of that. Um, but either way, it was a fun time, and... Um, yeah, I, I, I like it more than most people do. Yes, it's a little disappointing after 10 years of waiting, but I'm hoping there's going to be a third one in 2029. I think that would be really, really funny. Um, but either way, like I said, it's not as good as the first, but still a fun time. So with that being said, if you guys have stuck around to the entire video, I truly do thank you because at this point, I still don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm guessing it's an over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I do not know at this point in time. But I just want to say thank you so much for watching and look out for a year or two from now whenever I redo this video and do an updated version. And if you like this video so much, let me know because I might be doing a complete Blu-ray collection because that would be fun to do as well. Which I should have done Blu-ray first, but I'm more passionate about 4K than I am Blu-ray. But either way, I just want to say thank you so much. And if you found any enjoyment out of this, let me know. And with that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.